morning, everybody. We are all ready. We are here together with uh, uh, people in the audience uh, and uh, uh, our fellow speakers and audience uh, from uh, uh, the um, Zoom connections. Today, we are going to uh, focus on uh, the uh, uh, EU financed project BIM for EEB. We have a long schedule ahead, therefore, since the lineup is uh, um, very well represented, I would like to start uh, with uh, our councillor, Mr. Martin Soli, is uh, connected. He should be online. Buongiorno, buongiorno. Good morning, here I am. Good morning, Mr. Councillor. I hope you can hear me well. I am very sorry, I will not be able to participate uh, to uh, the uh, proceeds, uh, proceedings this morning since I have uh, another very important meeting this morning. But uh, nonetheless, I want uh, to uh, greet you and uh, uh, welcome you heartily, heartfully. Uh, thank you to the organizers, uh, especially um, Mrs. Uh, Shuto, uh, Pro-Rector of the University, Mr. Longo of the Politecnico, the President of Anci Milan, Regina De Albertis, the General Secretary of UKA Costruzione, Luigi Perezic, and uh, I also know that uh, uh, if he's there or he's connected, uh, Mr. Pietro Baracollo of the Ministry of um, Sustainable Infrastructure and uh, Dr. Dimitrius Miliarubus uh, from the Union, European Union. So to uh, go to the point, uh, the um, building uh, um, heritage uh, of our uh, um, standing of uh, housing is 100,000 uh, uh, units. Uh, in these uh, last years, we have intervened with the refurbishments of uh, the existing standing and uh, the greatest attention has, given, has been given to energy efficiency as uh, shown uh, by the data of and uh, supported by the uh, National Plan for Resilience and Recovery, thanks to resources uh, of uh, uh, Bitwak uh, and for quality and comfort in housing and uh, the program for social housing. The theme of uh, energy efficiency in uh, housing is extremely important since uh, it is uh, highly and closely uh, connected to uh, social spending and social uh, um, problems uh, given uh, to uh, fragile uh, people in the community. This is our uh, priority. It will allow, BIM will allow us to intervene on public houses by requalifying it and reducing energy consumption and reducing costs for the tenants of ALER, so our public housing project. This is why we are really extremely interested in participating to all of those opportunities and using those tools that express research in terms of highlighting a new intervention opportunities. And in this case, BIM for EEB, where the general housing I represent participates as a very, very attentive partner because you see our standing requires uh, um, uh, an analysis so as to be able to understand whether our assets can be renovated, refurbished with great uh, results 
and be able to revamp uh, uh, together with uh, um, decreasing uh, costs uh, and uh, energy bills. We are partners uh, of uh, BEAM for EEB is supported by the Horizon 2020 project. We are partners and we are very happy to participate to the project because we have seen that we will have a, a successful outcome. The partnership of this project, three universities belong to it, three research institutes, two uh, public uh, institutions and small and medium enterprises, and a number of associations that represent the European framework with the funding that uh, um, gets uh, to uh, 7 million um, allocation of funds. So the main platforms that have been developed uh, thanks uh, to this uh, project were focused uh, mainly on uh, planning new uh, construction sites. Instead, now, uh, the development of an interoperable platform uh, that offers specific software uh, uh, kits uh, that can be used uh, to requalify and uh, refurbish existing uh, assets and holdings, well, it is uh, an extremely important uh, aspect because it will be able uh, to requalify the mesh of our urban uh, uh, planning and will uh, uh, raise the bar of the uh, inhabitants of these uh, neighborhoods so as to allow these uh, uh, standings and holdings to become more and more attractive and comfortable for the tenants. This is why we consider it extremely important to participate as partners to the project so as to disseminate this method. Therefore, please, I would like to thank Aller, Varese, Monza, Como and Busto for um, uh, making the um, structure uh, available that will be refurbished. And I'm really sure that when sharing uh, in synergy the methodologies, we will be able to have uh, a successful uh, uh, lineup in terms of making the lives of our inhabitants better and better and uh, attracting at international uh, level. Thank you very much for your uh, organization. I hope you have a wonderful day's work and uh, successful um, results. Many, many thanks, Mr. Councillor. You really underpinned all of the most relevant uh, issues. Uh, Regione Lombardia is uh, highly committed to uh, work on this project. Uh, you have spoken of Aller Milano, which is the first European um, company in terms of uh, public housing for uh, the number of um, housing units uh, and this is why it is extremely important uh, to focus on this uh, project project now i'm going to leave the floor to professor donatella schuta uh, pro-rector of uh, the uh, university of uh, politecnico i'm very very happy to represent uh, the politecnico especially for uh, projects uh, like this one that are successful because uh, there is a collaboration of more bodies uh, and uh, funded by European uh, um, resources. Uh, these are not easy to achieve uh, if uh, the uh, relevance and an outstanding methodology of all the stakeholders uh, is not sound. So focusing on the social housing, uh, I would like to say that as uh, uh, 
Polytechnic University, we have a specific important role, both for training, education, and social functions. These are not separate entities because competence, technology, and people are the three main pillars we have to start from to win successfully the challenges on green transition and digitization. And these are the things that this project will really focus on in terms of achieving the, the resources of the National Plan for Recovery and Resilience. As a university, we really are at the core in terms of training and educating the youth, because the youth is the main resource that we have to give plenty of worth to, so as to be able to grow and work for the future, for the next coming 40 years. And they have to be able to learn for 40 years because technology, you know, uh, runs very, very rapidly and it's much um, swifter than the training we offer. We really need to train our youth to soft skills, uh, to the competence of uh, engineering and technological skills and be always updated. Thanks to research, this can be achieved. Uh, research is of uh, fundamental importance. We need uh, to be able to interpret, accelerate uh, the technological development uh, procedures uh, and that underpin uh, social transformations as well uh, by being ethical in this uh, pathway. As a university, we need to anticipate needs, uh, assess uh, solutions, uh, uh, be uh, far-sighted uh, and uh, represent uh, uh, solid uh, uh, solutions for the future. This is one of those projects that allows us to be uh, successful by networking uh, with the great uh, foreign um, universities, uh, institutions, um, uh, public institutions and bodies. Uh, so as uh, to uh, set up a pilot interventions that will make these technologies available for the near futures, near, near future and applications. This project, in fact, has been able to transform research into innovation. In fact, there is a great potentiality in terms of, of development. In fact, the number of uh, housing units is extremely high in terms of uh, requirements uh, of uh, refurbishment. It will allow us uh, to reduce uh, energy costs and allow us to be as sustainable as possible and given the increase of the raw material that has just occurred, occurred, there will be also an economic advantage thanks to our project. I really hope that our research will be able to be applied even thanks to the funds that we will receive from uh, uh, Europe, and I'm really very, very happy that these uh, funds uh, will arrive. Uh, they are of fundamental importance. We should not forget that this allows us to uh, work uh, and share our experience uh, with Europe. So uh, the European funds are as important as uh, the Italian uh, funds that will be received uh, with the National Plan for Recovery and Resilience. Uh, we will uh, set up a number of uh, initiatives uh, that will allow us uh, to redesign society out there and uh, win those uh, challenges. Therefore, I really hope that we will continue successfully with this project. Thank you very much. Many thanks, Mrs. Shuto. I really share what you just said. We really fully believe in the collaboration with the Polytechnico because these strategic themes represent the future. Now I'd like to give the floor to Professor Stefano Capolongo, 
director of uh, construction and the methodology approach of a material of the Polytechnico. Many, many thanks for this invitation. I'm very happy to be here and it's extremely important to participate to this uh, initiative that uh, sees us uh, as uh, actors and players uh, in uh, this uh, initiative that has a larger scope uh, from the technological and scientific point of view. I'm very happy to uh, bring uh, the uh, greetings of uh, many professors of the departments. I am president of the Department of Architecture, Engineering of, Co of Construction and Building, together with the other institutional partners, public and private, and I really believe uh, it will be a, a, a strength uh, that uh, we uh, will uh, share to create a synergy, uh, networking and uh, innovation. We're really aware of the importance of uh, the baseline research, but we're also aware that uh, we need to apply this uh, research. So this project really represents the culture and philosophy of uh, the Polytechnico University and of uh, uh, my uh, department uh, that is really rooted in uh, interdisciplinarity. We have some strategic lines to follow. There are These are six and one of them, one of the most active and innovative, uh, is linked to digitization in a building. And in fact, uh, this uh, this theme, which was already extremely relevant, especially for uh, BIM, and we all know that in this new socio-economic and uh, um, the pandemic uh, framework, uh, acceleration in the procedures has been uh, necessary. And this acceleration has um, come to the first surface not only in uh, building that, uh, nonetheless, uh, let me remind you, is uh, the main uh, driver of our economic uh, um, sector in Italy. But the acceleration has uh, come to the surface in health, uh, in the processing of data. So this uh, uh, project further represents an opportunity that we need to seize in terms of, of always being able of uh, being able of uh, projecting i.e uh, projecting uh, uh, forth uh, forwards so we need to uh, intercept all those uh, social needs uh, that are out there in Polit Polytechnico and the other stack stakeholders and partners need to meet uh, concretely through this uh, platform therefore we hope to interpret uh, the uh, need uh, of being able to support uh, the uh, future of building. Uh, this industry will be supported uh, by us uh, so as to also promote uh, new uh, fields of research that are linked uh, to well-being as well. Uh, the councillor was speaking of uh, quality of life, therefore this project doesn't only represent, uh, you know, digitization, but uh, on a wider sphere, well-being, health of the population. Yes, we very well know that more than 56% of world uh, uh, population lives in urban areas. By 2050, more than 70% of world population will live in urban areas. Therefore, as uh, planners, engineers, uh, urban designers, architects, we really have uh, an important responsibility in terms of promoting health and well-being. Um, moreover, sustainability is important, social, economic and environmental sustainability. I like to remind us uh, and underline it. All this goes in the direction of protecting uh, health. Again, uh, this uh, project is uh, the uh, opportunity of uh, supporting uh, new uh, opportunities of research. These uh, uh, are projects that will allow us uh, to uh, relaunch new themes. And so um, 
such an ambitious uh, uh, project will uh, be uh, the um, uh, spark for other novel projects that will uh, allow us to present new innovative themes of research. Politecnico, together with all the other uh, institutional partners, uh, will be able to uh, meet uh, and satisfy all of the requirements. So, um, greetings also on my behalf and, wel and welcome uh, to this uh, uh, day's work. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Capolongo, for all of uh, the uh, uh, topical hints uh, you have offered. Now, let me leave uh, the floor to uh, Mrs. Regina de Albertis, who, who is not here with us. She is uh, um, connected. Uh, let me uh, see whether she is uh, already connected. Yes, I'm here. Good morning, everybody. I am connected. Many thanks for your invitation. First of all, I'm very sorry I cannot be there with you, but uh, I have another appointment at 10.30, so I could not uh, make both uh, uh, meetings. I'm very happy for this uh, extremely important uh, uh, meeting. It is uh, really key at the moment. Uh, the role of public institutions is uh, uh, extremely relevant for future development and investing in the building uh, industry. I'm sorry, I cannot uh, uh, switch on my camera. I'm sorry. Uh, um, you cannot see me, I can only switch on the mic, but not the video camera, so I'm very sorry, you can't see me. So, without uh, losing uh, time, uh, maybe I will uh, continue with my intervention, since uh, we're short on time, and I'm sorry you can't see me. Anyhow, investing in the building industry and spin-off is extremely important in terms of uh, GDP, well-being, wealth, and uh, um, employment. And this is extremely important in the five-year plan that we have uh, ahead, and we are very happy that the National Plan for uh, Recovery and Resilience will support us further. This will allow us uh, to uh, requalify and refurbish uh, the uh, public assets uh, in terms of uh, housing for uh, the uh, social and economic uh, aspects. And pushing uh, on uh, these uh, elements will uh, allow us uh, to use uh, yeah, new material that are environmental uh, uh, friendly and uh, support uh, the youth uh, in terms uh, of um, education. So uh, green uh, sustainability, and uh, um, uh, projects uh, for a building is extremely important. It is a multidisciplinary approach that needs to include numerous uh, disciplines. In fact, we are committed in uh, building sites to regenerate uh, the public uh, urban uh, tissue, requires maximum efficiency in the number of uh, numerous um, stakeholders, uh, companies, uh, suppliers. Uh, the supply chain has to be in line with the the needs of the uh, final end users uh, so as to offer comfort and uh, well-being in uh, living requirements. So for the social tissue, we need to focus on these uh, focal points. Working for the BIM for EEB project will allow us to seize all the opportunities in terms of supplying the best quality in terms of building. To uh, really be uh, able to offer the uh, innovation of digitization, we have to offer the uh, results of this project to the final users, uh, so building size uh, sites uh, that will uh, set up procedures, uh, processes uh, that uh, will uh, engage the whole value chain. We are working with BIM, and at the moment, we are working with it and using it uh, 
um, uh, 360 degrees uh, and being able to uh, use uh, this uh, same procedure also in building sites is not that easy. It will require more time and experience. It is a, a long, um, um, the, the timeline is quite long, but we are doing our utmost best to support every stakeholder and uh, digitize uh, the sector. We have to support the industry to achieve uh, these objectives of innovation and uh, by uh, highlighting as uh, tools uh, uh, and the uh, digitization of a BIM, we will be able to support the final building sites. Even the building sites have invested in these uh, tools and have uh, given a value to change. So it's not a disseminated model, alas, but we know it's not easy to support uh, uh, this uh, field of the industry that is made up of millions of uh, small and medium uh, enterprises. And as a uh, public uh, administration uh, bodies, it's not always easy to support all of them. We lack uh, competence and skills. And this is why there are some uncertainties uh, and uh, maybe this is why BIM, uh, BIM's important, uh, ha importance has not been understand, understood uh, thoroughly. Anyhow, uh, we will do uh, everything that is in our power to uh, support uh, this uh, development. Thank you very much. I'm really sorry you could not see me. Uh, the camera probably doesn't work. Uh, uh, I hope you have a fruitful day's of work. Um, many thanks. We were able to hear you nonetheless uh, and uh, hear the most important points uh, of uh, your uh, participation in terms of coordinating this uh, complex uh, model. As uh, you also stressed, uh, in fact, uh, the uh, public administration bodies uh, are uh, really um, in uh, this uh, um, pathway, participating in this pathway so as to push this model as much as possible. And as a region lobby, we are doing our utmost best uh, to disseminate it. Now, as uh, time is uh, short, uh, let me uh, give uh, the uh, word. So we uh, should have had uh, Mr. Pietro Baratono with us, uh, who unluckily will not be with us, but we have uh, Mr. Gatto, who uh, will represent uh, the ministry. You have the word. I wonder whether there are some problems uh, with the mic. Chiedo ai tecnici di intervenire. Grazie. Bene, grazie. Eh, ecco, questo è un intervento non previsto, io non, non sì, mi aspettavo sono quelli... quindi non ho preparato nulla. Sono... Okay, so I didn't expect this. So I would just like to share a couple of thoughts with you. I was asked to uh, replace Mr. Baratono. I have just been informed about this now. Mr. Baratono has done so much for BIM. I cooperated with uh, Mr. Baratono here in Milan, and together with him, we managed, I mean, to, uh, well, first of all, work together on BIM, BIM. So inside our organization, there have been tests, experiments, interesting projects, and uh, I started uh, taking part in the works of the UNI. Of course, I'm talking about standard 11337 with great results. Now, we've been able, I'm sure, to um, put together a new pathway Great results, I have to say, because once again, all of these topics um, have been dealt with very thoroughly, professionally, and once again, Mr. Bartona was responsible for this effort. Now, there was another extremely important step that was uh, Decree 560, dating back to December 2019. 
Well, basically, now, first of all, this was based on a previous decree, decree number 50, in terms of the implementation of decree number 50. So basically, um, that was uh, the real moment where BIM, let's say, uh, entered in force uh, in terms of public works or public projects in general. Uh, I remember very well, I mean, the uh, creation of this decree. So it's a piece of legislation, not easy at all, quite difficult. Once again, decree 560 basically was uh, a sort of a compromise, but a very strong, I mean, a thorough, in-depth text. Uh, this means that it has brought about, uh, let's say, uh, new constraints in terms of, uh, you know, timing, deadlines, uh, in terms of, you know, starting off the works. Let's say uh, it has not, uh, uh, let's say, delayed uh, our, you know, uh, efforts uh, and, uh, well, actually, it represented important steps. I know it's been updated recently, by the way, and this sort of up-to-date was done by also referring to regulation, uh, well, the UNI uh, 1137. We have completed such an important pathway on the fact that BIM is now mandatory, let's say compulsory within public administrations. So once again, uh, this is it, I mean, with my contribution, of course, I mean, this was one of the things we have done together some time ago. But of course, I do confirm that it was, uh, well, a thrilling um, job, if you will. Uh, really, really encouraging, very positive. It has brought about uh, incredibly, uh, well, interesting results. I also have to say that, you know, all of this um, effort uh, turned into a step forward for local administrations. And uh, I have to say that plenty of uh, positive fruits uh, have been brought about by this effort. Well, I have to say that this doesn't always necessarily happen. I mean, um, you know, uh, in some cases we have, you know, companies or organizations which are so diverse and unique. So it's a question of time. We also have a cultural uh, issue, if you will, that we need to take into account and to go through as smoothly as possible. This is a beautiful cultural activity because um, it will help us remove hurdles and obstacles that still remain along the way for the final implementation of these technologies. Grazie l'ingegner Gatto. Mr. Gatto, thank you so much. Norma da quella spinta rende tutto. So once again, standards sometimes make, uh, you know, our life a little bit more complex, especially for, you know, small situations, you know, the small organizations, the small municipalities. I know it's a complex model. It is definitely complex, but fortunately, we have some time to go and, um, you know, we will sort of get equipped. Um, I think that we need to involve young people, you know, public administration should do this. I mean inviting young people to cooperate with us. I mean, they are the future. They will be the ones that will bring about this change. Well, actually, they will speed up change. Okay, then, thank you once again. Flora goes now to the project officer. Uh, Mr. Dimitrios Sibiliuris, sorry for mispronouncing this Greek name. Uh, you are not here, Mr. Dimitrios. I know you have a remote connection. Okay, let me check if we have the possibility to listen to Mr. Billy Uris. Okay, sorry, I was just told that... Okay, let me check again. Yes, we do have Mr. Perisic. Once again, I apologize. Sorry, sorry, I just missed, you know, one line, so of course we have your presentation. Mr. Perisic, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. I have uh, uh, put together some slides, and I, you've given me only seven minutes, so I really have to, you know, speed up and focus on the key uh, highlights. So this is what our organization is doing to support and accelerate the uh, you know, uh, adoption of digital systems uh, in, uh, um, you know, in the construction industry. Of course, uh, we have already talked about, uh, uh, you know, this transition. So Mrs. De Albertis has highlighted, I mean, the importance of this. 
uh, industry or supply chain, which is once again so important for the economy of our country. I hope you can see my slides. Okay, here we go. Okay. This is the structure of our federation. The name is Feder Costruzioni, so Construction Federation. Uh, you can see here that you know our federation is one of the most important ones of the country. This is a system-wide vision which really uh, fits the uh, digital world today. You know, digitization is one of the drivers uh, today. Uh, it helps us create new partnerships in industrial supply chains and platforms. This means we can really, really make a uh, you know, quantum leap forward in terms of speeding up execution and management of uh, uh, sites or any type of construction. Now, uh, figures are important, as you can see here, on a European level, but also in Italy. So look at the value of the supply chain. We went through 10 years of crisis. I mean, plenty of companies... Uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, well, had to, uh, you know, stop their business. But once again, the sector is still so important in the national economy. So I have to say that this is really important for the, uh, I mean, in terms of reaching objectives for our country. And of course, we also would like to reach sustainability and resilience objectives, which is, uh, you know, again, a very important driver for the economy of our country. Now, it goes without saying that the challenge, as I said before, is definitely complex. I mean, the supply chain is very wide. Uh, we have many different types of organizations. It's a very wide market. And even the, I mean, the public, uh, let's say, um, system is very important. So we have the so-called industrial part that, of course, has to jump into digitization and innovation. But, of course... They have to be followed by the public bodies as well. Again, this is an industry that, uh, once again, it is very complex, uh, but I'm sure we will get plenty of advantages thanks to digital systems. So right at the center of our business, uh, uh, of course, we have, you know, the everyday business. Uh, for example, you know, the price increases, uh, you know, the energy price increase, and then, of course, the uh, resiliency plan. But... Anyway, we started working all together in Europe in terms of innovation because this is what we want to do. Um, you know, pushing, encouraging the sector to move towards that direction. We do this by taking part in many types of activities. For example, H Europe, we have the PPP built for people. And, uh, you know, by the way, PPP built for people, it's a public, sorry, public private partnership. And then uh, it sort of, you know, manages many different tenders concerning uh, building or construction. Um, I will also be talking about our partnership with the Polytechnical uh, in Milan. So we help uh, new digital platforms uh, to be created. Uh, we believe that this is the future of digital services for all industrial sectors. So, once again, we are working with many partners, including the local Milan Polytechnical, because we want to create a national digital hub for the construction industry. This may be a big driver, encouraging, fostering uh, you know, uh, participation of SMEs into this major revolution, an impact on the market. Well... Uh, there's another thing we would like to do. So we're also working from the, let's say, political point of view because, uh, you know, construction in general has to be uh, falling within the uh, European industrial data spaces. Uh, so it's basically European industrial data for some large sectors. Of course, they give us an opportunity. So all of this would be a sort of a springboard for new platforms and digital services for companies. This is what we need to work properly. And, uh, well, this is what we are doing through three European projects. Uh, we've been directly involved in the projects, and I'm not sure that there are some extra details on the project in the next slide. Here we go. Now, DG Place, this is a strategic project, and uh, it's being coordinated by the Milan Polytechnical. 
um, the European Commission has appreciated, I mean, these services quite a lot uh, with uh, a fantastic rating. It is also now part of the uh, scenarios for transition. So we are moving towards a digital ecosystem, so a green, resilient construction ecosystem. So this is a commission staff working document dating back to December the 14th, 2021. In a couple of pages, uh, uh, they say the DigiPlace is an important project. So hopefully this will have a positive impact on the European policies, but also on the member states policies to speed up digital adoption. We also have the data space um, opportunity. We, we think it's a great chance. So in the 2023 work program, construction hopefully will also be uh, included in terms of creating um, data spaces. We have another project, Meta Building, but also Meta Building Labs. The first one, Meta Building, receives uh, something like 2 million euros. Uh, this money will be given to uh, SMEs for innovation uh, initiatives with vouchers. Every voucher will be worth 5,000 euros. And I have to say that, uh, well, um, we also have, uh, you know, highly structured projects. In this case, the fund will be 60,000 euros. Um, I think that, you know, the main aim here is to push forward innovation for SMEs thanks to the uh, money given by the consortium. So there will be a collaboration platform between six different countries. We also have meta building uh, uh, labs. Uh, in this case, we're working with workshops, so real labs. In this case, uh, 13 countries are involved. The project is a five year long one and we will be using the same platform. So, in a nutshell, I'm sure in the next years or so, we will be able to create quite a wide, deep, thorough system represented by companies, organizations, universities, and research centers. So, active in innovation, thus speeding up the uh, implementation of innovations which are created thanks to European projects. Next slide, please. This is another very important domestic national project uh, DIH Cube. We are writing the final proposal to be put forward. The deadline is uh, the 25th of January. Oh, sorry, the 25th of February. Um, okay, then we, we hope that um, this will also be uh, well a great source of resources. I mean, two million euros a year for four years or even up to seven years. We will also have the possibility to. Uh, create a new hub so we can really really talk about the entire innovation system so this means that uh, yes definitely this means uh, speeding up innovation and especially digitization of small and medium enterprises but also this is also good for public administration you know because we uh, also would like to uh, you know to help a public administration to uh, uh, let's say be more used to digital systems in the next slides, uh, very briefly, you can see the uh, most important uh, highlights of DigiPlace and even the most important outcomes. Uh, it is uh, an infrastructure conceptual system. So you can see here how European digital platforms uh, will be working. Of course, I'm talking about construction. The system will be open, interoperable. This means um, every single data point that we are interested in this is important for companies, of course. Um, of course, I'm talking about those companies using uh, digital systems or BIM software. Well, of course, uh, they will be able to access uh, European or Europe-wide uh, data points and data sets so as to increase digitization. Uh, we have some uh, pillars uh, that we put together. So the consortium is now very big. We are working with representatives from Italy, France, and Germany. I have to say that the Italian ministry, um, you know, gave us a big help in order to create the strategic roadmap to do this. So hopefully, once again, all of this will be implemented in Italy, but also in the rest of Europe. 
This is my last slide on uh, uh, Meta Building Labs. So this is a brand new project. We are creating a network of uh, testing labs in terms of uh, building structures and frames. We will involve 13 countries. And um, we hope that with these operating tools, I mean, these tools are so, let's say, uh, well, daily used, I have to say, by companies. We will be able to push forwards and to increase digitization in this industry. At the same time, we deploy the same effort on, let's say, uh, political, strategic objectives, once again, in Italy, but also in the rest of Europe. This is it. Thank you so much for this, uh, for, my, for, for inviting me, and congratulations for the project you are about to introduce. So, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Terrisic. Uh, you've been very clear. So once again, Feder Costruzioni definitely has taken up the challenge fully. So next speaker is from Mr. Dimitrios Sibiliuris from uh, Remote. Ecco, c'è il professor Dagnotti che eh, come capofila. Yeah, uh, can you hear me? Yes, okay. I can hear you. you can yeah. I don't know if you want to light on the camera or it's up to I you. Have, I have to find the way to do it uh, <laughs> because uh, I only see audio settings. Yeah, I think it's up to the uh, la regia. Uh, mi sta dicendo se si può attivare la, la camera, credo che sia. Uh... Okay, once again, asking to set up the cam. I think we need our own local technicians. It's up to you, Dimitrios, as you prefer. I'm fine like this. Now, now we, so, are, we are checking, but you, you can start just, just if you want. Uh, good morning to everybody and congratulations for this initiative. As uh, everybody said, it's very important of uh, what we are doing. So, excuse me a second, I have... Perso il collegamento. So, can you hear me now? Yes, Again? Okay. Yes, thank you. Okay, now I have a different setting. Yeah. Thank you very much again. Thank you for this invitation. And as I was saying, what you're doing is very important for the whole spectrum of uh, construction and innovation now business. Now you uh, is it okay? Yes. yes. Excellent. <laughs> And uh, I had the presentation, but whatever was in my presentation has already been said. And uh, as a project uh, officer... C'è una presentazione, mi sta dicendo che c'è una presentazione anche. I can do it. Uh, sto dicendo all'ufficio tech... All... Okay, just telling our technician to launch the... Create your presentation. Just a moment. Uh, we, 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 have some in, yeah, we are in time, so... Eh, si può attivare la sua presentazione? Click on share. Ok. Dimitrios. Eh, sì, the host disabled participant screen sharing. I cannot share. Okay. I'm disabled. Moment, one moment. Eh, dice che non è attivato per fare la presentazione, ma lui ha mandato una presentazione. Ah. Eh, adesso eh, i tecnici vedo che si stanno attivando. Uh, the technician, Dimitrios, they are, you know, eh, we are thinking about to say my key message is very clear. I was starting that I come from HADEA, which is a health and digital executive agency from the European Commission. And basically what we do, we are trying to turn the European policy into action by giving funding and monitoring projects like yours. So what I would like to say is that indeed Europe is facing a crisis and trying to change it to see it as a challenge and have the best outcome out of it. And the issues in our case, is that buildings are responsible for 40% of the energy consumption and 30%, 36% of its greenhouse gas emissions of Europe. So in the long-term goal that we want to make the European continent CO2 neutral, we need to speed up the innovation process, not only in numbers, but also in quality of materials and 
further on expanding in quality of new job and market opportunities. And BIM for EEB is set in the center of this revolution and transition, so as to be able to create the target group is around 35 million building renovations by 2030 and about 160,000 new jobs in the construction sector. So I'm looking forward to listen to your discussion and I'm also inviting you to keep your uh, knowledge and keep on looking on the funding participant portal of the European Commission because when you have the document of the EU policy that says about the key strategic steps that will follow in the future, these steps either is standard, either is uh, capacity or is uh, sustainable construction products and services will be translated to funding opportunities. From the previous I know that you're all aware about the possibilities of funding. So currently we have two projects, two proposals, topics running on the construction and the renovation sector in my unit. So I want to say keep up the good work and your work is very important, not only on a national level, but on a pan-European level. So it's good and it's great that I see that you are creating co-collaboration with other countries and other institutions so as to be able to put an extra step in the advancement of this green and digital transition that is not only for the buildings, but is also for the benefit of the citizens, the economy and the environment too. So closing here, again, thank you very much for this invitation and I hope to see you in the future in person. Good Thanks. luck for the rest of your meetings. Speriamo, yeah. speriamo di vederci presto di persona perché... Okay. Thank, eh. thank you so much, and hopefully it will be possible. Uh, we hope to, uh, to see you. Uh, the next steps will be in Madrid uh, in March. We, March. we hope to, that there we can meet you, uh, Dimitrios, or in Brussels in June we will have other meetings. Thank you, Dimitrios. Bene. Uh... Okay, then, so you are the, uh, well, um, leader of this very important project. So, okay. Let me check. I mean, uh, are we going also to have a break or? I mean, before moving the second part of our morning uh, session. Okay then, so we can introduce the project and then there will be a short break in order to uh, uh, move to the second session, which is the real beating heart of today's workshop. We will show the progress of the project and in particular, we will show the tools, of course, available. Of course, sure, thank you. Okay, thank you, Immacolata. I will be speaking Italian. Yes, so we do have uh, the simultaneous translation. My slides are in English already. Now, it's a European project. So, of course, we have two different languages. And then we have all of our partners connected from the rest of Europe. You can see here that the main objective of the project is the uh, development uh, of uh, a specific tool kit. So this is an IT management system based on BIM. Now, BIM or BIM, as we said before, is representing the future um, of our, let's say, digitization efforts in the construction industry. Okay, let's go back to my presentation. Here we go. This is what we have developed. Okay, can we go back? Okay, this is the title, right? First slide. So this is a BIM based fast toolkit for efficient renovation in buildings. 
It's a um, cluster, if you will, of software programs that are turning around them. And this is what we need to manage the energy requalification in the building industry or construction. So the focus is residential buildings. You can now see the general objectives. And, um, you know, the objective is to uh, support or sustain the operators of the process in managing uh, interventions on built-up areas or buildings in every single phase. So uh, by introducing IT systems or digitization, I'm starting from BIM, but there is more than this because as we will see later, there is something more than this. Um, as you can see in the top of the slide, um, the objective is to improve the efficiency of information management. Once again, we have to improve the efficiency of information management throughout the process involving all the operators uh, having to do with requalification uh, projects with measurable objectives, which is a cost reduction, time reduction, and improvement of performances, so the general quality of the buildings, and um, also facing, if you will, the comfort needs of users As you can see in the presentation, this effort has involved the residents at different levels. In the second bullet, you have a description of the uh, tool. So this system is based on the CDE, which is a common data environment that has been already regulated. A couple of seconds ago, we mentioned I mean, the regulation and the standard. And we have to remember that in this project, we have the participation of Professor Pavan coordinating you know, the group. And then he developed the uh, 11337 standard in compliance with the ISO regulation 19560. Um, we also tried and make another step forward. I mean, We have different operating tools that we will see in a minute. And, uh, you know, they have been developed because there is an interoperable exchange of data sets and data points. As you can see on the bottom of the slide, we will introduce the new IT systems, the so-called Daikon ontologies and the linked data. Now, they will lead us towards the creation of the digital twin. So not only do we have the management of models and information on models, of course, I'm talking about BIM models based on an international standard, which is the IFC. So once again, Building Smart is the body that defines this on an international level. There are also many other developments having to do with linked data in order to manage the data coming from the sensors installed in homes or houses. And we also have other ontologies concerning the geo. So there's a, a, you know, a connection between BIM and uh, GIS. Okay, this is the project um, in a nutshell. You can see the call on top, so the European call. This is a 7 million euros worth project. So once again, BIM has been adapted in order to requalification to, uh, well, improve effectiveness. Now, as for the timing, um, we are about to close. So uh, deadline is in June. Uh, I really would like to thank the uh, regional authorities because this is a great opportunity to uh, disclose results. I have to say that, you know, this is what we're doing now. So we are into the dissemination phase. I would like to thank the regional authorities 
Yeah, we have Mrs. Makore, so thank you so much for, I mean, all hosting this event. So you can see here the partners. I mean, we have three uh, partners. So we have the university, the Polytechnico here in Milan, UCC, so the University at Cork. This is the Dresden Technical University. We also have uh, two research institutes, one in Finland and another one in Sweden. Two public administrations. So, so our region, so Lombardy in this project uh, represents, if you will, the public side of the uh, you know, effort together with ALER, A-L-E-R. So they have given us a great contribution. They have uh, offered, I mean, the building that we will be talking about later with plenty of difficulties because, you know, um, as for digital systems in this organization, well, implementing this is not easy for many reasons. Uh, we may talk about this, by the way. So we have four small and medium enterprises. So we have one team attending today that has developed the platform. Solintel from Spain. They worked on using the results. Sweet Five in Cyprus. So there's an interesting app that we will see later to manage the interface with end users and visual link. They brought about the uh, skills concerning ontologies, and this is from Finland. Three large organizations, we have Kaverian in Finland. We will see it later. CG, GCI, sorry, in Sweden. They developed the uh, tools for survey. It's an interesting tool that we have invented for you know surveying the internal parts of the walls of piping in some cases uh, you don't find this information in drawings especially for old buildings and then we have Prochem from Poland now uh, there's one association or a consortium ACE -A -E, representing European architects from Brussels and uh, you know, they um, have quite a major uh, network. So this is our toolkit. You see the uh, BIM management system is at the core, so as to share the various uh, uh, tools. And then with Davide Maned, we will go in depth uh, on how it works, uh, it's functioning. And then we have six uh, relevant tools. On the left hand side, you can see, you know, there is uh, uh, a lot of work to be done on the surveying, uh, the surveyor aspect of uh, the existing uh, assets, uh, geometries, uh, of uh, buildings uh, had to be uh, well uh, um, understood thanks to uh, new uh, scanning devices. And then we invented these devices that allows us to understand what is uh, into the walls. Uh, so uh, piping systems uh, and different elements uh, that can exist uh, in between the walls uh, that uh, are not always represented uh, in the drawing of uh, the uh, plans of many, many years ago. So BIM Planner was uh, um, developed by VTT in Finland uh, and uh, it is the Renovation Works uh, Management and Innovates, uh, specifically the location-based structure. What do I mean with that? The, operative uh, um, software uh, uh, organization for space management. So it's a device that will optimize space management uh, during operations so as to avoid uh, uh, overlap of interventions, uh, for example, and uh, to better manage the uh, talks with end users so as to uh, schedule interventions. 
for example, in terms of social housing, we often have uh, enormous problems uh, for uh, intervention uh, uh, scheduling because they, these spaces are inhabited by fragile citizens uh, who are not always that attentive in replying uh, to our requests uh, and uh, a timing uh, um, schedule. So this uh, is very important for ALER and also for all the other enterprises. It's very, very um, delicate matter and we have to uh, intervene uh, gently but this uh, prototype uh, moving on uh, will allow us uh, to um, um, streamline it at best BIM for occupants well this tool is uh, very important so as to talk uh, to the final uh, uh, users it's an app that you can download on your smartphone uh, you can talk so the uh, with the facility managers with the enterprises uh, the occupants and also share the measurements uh, uh, energy uh, measurements uh, everything is included in the app oteras well, this is a device that allows uh, for procurement requirements specification for BACs. Uh, so the uh, automation of um, systems. BIM CPD is uh, developed in Ireland with UCC. It's extremely important. And BIMISA is extremely important. Again, we've spoken of uh, sustainability and energy efficiency, and this tool, in fact, will allow us to simulate energy performance by calculating them in real time and managing the data measured in the building. So energy efficiency is measured, but also the weather information is measured. This uh, project has been developed in three years and a half, subdivided in three main phases. Stage one was the initial one with the, the construction service company, companies, designers, data ontologies, then phase two, the development of the tool, the core. And then uh, today we are at uh, phase three where these kits, uh, these tools uh, are uh, um, applied and validated. And uh, the first one we're going to talk about is the demo site in Monza, thanks to the support uh, offered by Aller and uh, uh, Region Lombardy in Monza and Varese and other uh, sites. Roberto will really be um, to the point in order to introduce them. And then Poland and Finland sites. Next slide, please. So, uh, this is my final slide with all my contact information. You can see the website, you have the uh, email addresses, and on the website you will be able to uh, um, get all the relevant information, watch some videos, uh, and uh, read the presentation and how the various tools work uh, is thoroughly explained. In fact, some of these uh, uh, tools uh, can also be text tested. We have, uh, we're present on uh, Twitter and other uh, communication uh, channels and uh, underneath the uh, logos of uh, the 15 partners. So by this, I have uh, concluded. Many, many thanks, um, Mr. Daniotti. Uh, let's have a short uh, break uh, um, during the uh, screening of uh, this uh, video so that we will also be able to uh, sanitize uh, the um, stage. ...a powerful BIM-based toolset for design and construction professionals, owners and inhabitants along the building renovation journey. It saves up to 20% of time, 15% of cost and 10% of energy. The renovation journey starts with a survey of the building. At this stage, the fast mapping toolkit speeds up the scan to BIM process and improves data visualization through augmented reality. For the design phase, the BIM4 EEB team proposes three tools. 
The Bemisa tool helps in selecting the right design options for the building's energy refurbishment. Alcheres supports the design of room automation systems, enabling a more efficient use of the heating, cooling and lighting system. BIM CPD, the BIM constraints, performance and data tool, supports the design team in checking these three key areas of interest. In the construction phase, the BIM Planner software enables weekly scheduling and tracking of the renovation activities on site. Occupants web application keeps residents and owners informed about the renovation, their indoor home conditions, comfort preferences and energy consumption. This information is also useful during the in-use phase. To ensure renovation quality, it is important to understand how the building performs afterwards. Along the whole renovation journey, the BIM Management System digital platform integrates the six tools, helping everyone work together efficiently and storing useful information for the building's life cycle. The tools have been validated at three demonstration sites, Italy, Poland and Finland. Visit BIM4EEB website and discover BIM Management System and tools for your renovation.
qua. Chiedo, chiedo a tutti di riprendere. So please go back to your seats as we are going to uh, restart our meeting. Here we are. We have all our guests uh, who are already connected, I believe. So, you can sit here, yes. Perfetto. Datemi il... Ci siamo? Riprendiamo, riprendiamo. So we're ready. We can restart with our workshop. Now I would like to give the floor to uh, Mr. Uh, Roberto uh, Lenzo from uh, Aller Varese. And uh, I will introduce you as the representative of Aller Varese. All of the Aller housing uh, projects were linked in the uh, area of the province, but now Aller includes all of the sites of the uh, Lombardy region. Now we also have uh, at the, the, um, on stage Mr. Mainini, and uh, they will uh, um, introduce uh, the uh, projects uh, uh, or the demo site in Via della Birona. You will uh, therefore both have uh, the floor to introduce uh, this. Yes, well, good morning, everybody. I will uh, present uh, the uh, operative uh, project. We have been awarded the bid and we are waiting for the final inspection. Uh, the intervention with plenty of photographs so as to underline the great deal of work that has been done. Let me start by saying that the um, renovation uh, requalified uh, energy and it was also funded uh, by a European uh, funding uh, in two, uh, 2014 2020 AS4 together with the Environment and Housing Councils we are a public body and procedures for the call for bids were extremely long to follow and even to receive a funding. The project was started at the end of 2019 finally and the um, uh, call for tender was uh, launched in June 2020 so as to be in time for the allocation of funds. The uh, building that you're now going to see in the, the numerous uh, photographs that uh, are part of my presentation, yes, so this is the first one, yes. These are the first pictures we took. This is a, a typical bid, uh, building with 65 apartments, so not really small. 
it was built in the 80s, so not in the distant past. Anyhow, in a very short time, as the operators in this line of work know, many things have changed, and now we have a class different levels of energy efficiency, eight floors, 65 apartments, as I already said. In a very short period of time, uh, it was uh, really in need of a retrofit and uh, requalification, refurbishment, uh, um, uh, as normal for uh, these uh, buildings. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, public bodies uh, are scarce on resources and so tend to forget about the uh, needs uh, for uh, uh, renovation. Luckily, uh, we have received uh, numerous uh, funding um, uh, lines from uh, the region, and so we have uh, uh, obtained uh, support and help uh, for maintenance, and uh, we identified the needs uh, of uh, maintenance, uh, and we found 1 million euro for these uh, um, renovation works. So we spoke of 7 million euros initially, uh, and we achieved an extra 1 million plus the resources that were offered by the ALER. As Ms. Vanacora said, we are ALER Varese, and there is, there is a, a, a site also in Busto Arsizio. We manage 19,000 apartments. The uh, assets belong to us. 14,000 apartments are ours, and four or 5,000 belong to the municipality, not to ALER. To introduce the project, um, let me... Um, First of all, though, say that I was extremely happy to participate uh, to the project because, you know, for us, it really represented a one that we wanted to seize and uh, which allowed it, us to participate in You know, I'm an engineer and I speak of BIM. Yes, it's a project. We will follow up uh, with a 3D software. It's not only that. And... Uh, uh, BIM is uh, uh, completely at a different level. It's a new methodology which uh, has allowed us, uh, you know, to enter in the detail of all the requirements uh, of uh, the uh, buildings, as Mr. Daniotto already said. So thanks to him to the region, uh, Lombardy, that was, you know, the, the main link that allowed us to participate to the project. Thanks to um, engineer Mainini, who will then uh, um, participate to uh, the uh, morning's work. I also want to thank um, the whole team uh, at ALER. I see Mrs. Monti here, Vincenzo Politi, Andrea Monti, and now another name, Marco Gavarini, well, thanks to him, um, what did we do? You see, the first thing we were asked was to present a BIM model of uh, the uh, project that meant that uh, we, want, we were asked to um, work on the building. Uh, the project was not so large, 1 million uh, euro, so a small um, value. Uh, but uh, participating to a BIM model requires a high investment. Uh, and uh, if you don't participate uh, correctly to the BIM for EEB uh, correctly, it is meaningless. Well, I hope that Mr. Manini will better explain what I mean. I'm not sure I have uh, uh, been able to convey what I mean. So what we did in practice is 
that we uh, recovered all the plans we had in the uh, archive. We scanned them, digitized them, and then, uh, you know, since uh, not all BIM um, models are the same, we worked on the one we were presented and we worked with the toolkits that were made available and that we used for the project. So the project was made up of renovating and requalifying the outside coat of the building and uh, the uh, change of uh, the uh, windows uh, and uh, window sills, uh, uh, roller shades. Uh, and uh, we had already metered uh, uh, thermal uh, heat, which were the counted. Well, the main one uh, that really impacted uh, all of the ALER organizations, you know, as ALER, we uh, are able to manage interventions. So to start uh, from the project, uh, request for funding, uh, call for bids uh, and uh, intervention. So this is something we always uh, do and that we always manage. Of course, we have we are uh, working with uh, small uh, micro enterprises, uh, SMEs, and therefore this million uh, of euros that we had had to be used with uh, numerous uh, SMEs, and it's very difficult uh, to invest. Uh, the resources uh, oh yes uh, you want me to show the slides and in fact uh, this is uh, the 3d model on which uh, we uh, worked uh, a lot so small and medium enterprises were our counterparts and they're difficult to, to uh, involve uh, in uh, the uh, works and uh, very, very low costs. The uh, call uh, was uh, really at uh, low values, uh, low cost values. Uh, and those who participated to the tender or to the call really uh, know that it was extremely uh, difficult to satisfy that uh, uh, low level of uh, cost. These are some of the pictures I was uh, talking about. This is the building. You can uh, already uh, see how we intervened. One of the objectives uh, was that of maintaining time uh, requirements. And luckily, uh, as you know, we uh, experienced uh, the COVID outbreak, and so this does not did not. Uh, uh, help us at all. Some uh, enterprises had to close because of uh, uh, many infected uh, uh, workers. So we are working uh, uh, and intervening in these uh, um, buildings that are occupied. And so we really had to involve the occupants to better use the tools that were created. Uh, that aspect was extremely interesting and showed the positive approach that institutions had with the people living in the building. So the occupants participated willfully, even if there were some constraints, of course, as you can imagine, you know, it was not easy for them. Aller manages uh, uh, social housing. Um, 
sites and so the uh, occupants uh, um, are quite uh, dishomogeneous. Uh, there are many uh, poor occupants, uh, fragile occupants, uh, and uh, you know, uh, it. We went to uh, great efforts uh, to um, talk to the occupants uh, so as to allow them to understand what we were going uh, to do. You see, even uh, uh, it might appear banal, uh, entering in the occupant's home saying, you need to um, install these four sensors because we need to measure this, that, and the other. It was not always easy. Nonetheless, uh, and engineer Mainini is going to better explain the whole situation to you, um, we managed uh, to uh, achieve uh, successful results. These are some other pictures of Via della Birona in Monza. We have a short video that includes also some uh, pictures um, of the construction site. It was carried out uh, and the first thing we did uh, was uh, to um, mount uh, the scaffolding and, uh, and luckily what happened was uh, maybe you know already in Italy we often have uh, these uh, situations there were uh, the uh, possibility of in possibilities of investing in this uh, bonus that in Italy is called 110% uh, which uh, uh, is um, extremely valuable but what happens is that it's not always easy to uh, obtain it and to obtain it there are some price limits price uh, thresholds luckily the uh, company that worked uh, on this building used uh, uh, the uh, scaffolding uh, over the uh, 6,000 uh, um, square meters of uh, the uh, perimeter and the, the, they built up and down 1,500 uh, meters of uh, scaffolding so as not to incur in high costs and be able to achieve uh, this 110% of uh, the uh, eco bonus that uh, the um, Italian government has uh, offered to refurbish and uh, renovate buildings. Of course, uh, uh, mounting up and down these uh, scaffolding uh, units has uh, uh, decreased the speed of work and there has also been a, an increase of uh, requests uh, to uh, use uh, this ECHO um, bonus uh, um, funds and uh, the high demand for uh, uh, building uh, uh, enterprises uh, has created a number of constraints in terms of slowing down work, uh, uh, increasing uh, cost. Uh, so going back to this uh, building site, uh, it is uh, quite uh, a big building. So the uh, intervention was uh, quite uh, uh, important. Um, the uh, grey uh, parts uh, represent uh, the uh, stairways, uh, the stairwell. For those who are operative in uh, uh, building sites, well, you all know that there are a number of uh, situations that require in impromptu uh, interventions. And I want to thank uh, all the teams uh, of the Monza other organization because they were extremely good in the follow-up of the numerous interventions that were required. These are again the um, photographs of all of our interventions. Oh, let me just add that this building belonged to class G initially and we should be able to leap to class D, maybe even a C uh, by the end of uh, the uh, retrofit uh, uh, intervention. 
this building was made in 1981 and this was the class uh, uh, that uh, construction uh, sites uh, uh, stuck to. So it was normal, not because uh, of uh, uh, social housing project did they build in class G. So this project uh, really um, improved uh, and uh, enhanced, uh, uh, thanks to the sensor installation, uh, the microclimate that uh, uh, is uh, achieved inside uh, the homes uh, so as to uh, improve uh, the comfort uh, of uh, the occupants. So, Andrea, if I have forgotten anything, do pitch in, please. Uh, on my uh, side, I have concluded. Thank you very much, uh, Roberto. Uh, you really uh, made us understand that the uh, project was uh, highly committing, but uh, uh, let's be optimistic because you have uh, solved uh, the numerous uh, uh, problems that, that you uh, encountered uh, successfully. So it was uh, easy to understand that you had uh, to uh, be highly committed. This is a pilot project and um, the main uh, points uh, that uh, you uh, overcame really represent the improvements uh, that you have achieved uh, and the model really supported you in uh, showing us and paving the way of what we need uh, to uh, do in the future. Now let's move on and give the floor to engineer Andrea Mainini and he will focus specifically on the procedure itself, uh, how you uh, installed uh, the sensors and what results uh, you achieved. Thank you so much and good morning everyone. Now the effort required was uh, an across the board effort from all the partners. I will show you an example of the application required to our project. This is a wide demo project. From our um, case study, we've taken into account uh, the so-called um, symbol or representative apartments, uh, depending on the technical features of the apartments. They have to be functional or, let's say, meeting our needs. This is a three-step process for the demo purpose. So we have written the demos of the different tools we have applied this to our case study, including the installation of sensors to measure the visual and thermal comfort, air quality and the use of thermal energy, but also electricity. Step number three, this is the final step, validation of the methodology with KPIs. So the so-called performance indicators uh, thanks to them, we understand uh, if the project is performing or not. We have worked with ALER, so the building owner. Uh, data have been asked to ALER, the tool developers, in a way uh, directly uh, participated, I mean, to uh, support the uh, in order to support the users in using the tools, we organized uh, demo workshops. Anche per affiancarli durante l'utilizzo quotidiano, ormai giornaliero. At the same time, you know, we have the uh, daily use of tools because now we use these tools every single day. They will also participate in the assessment of the KPIs. They concern important aspects for us because, I mean, when we have assessed the project, so you can see them here, timing, costing, user's comfort, energy use, pre and post intervention, uh, economies of scale, environmental impact, uh, 
surveys, appreciation surveys, but also quality of the process uh, from every single player. So this is the building. Um, now it is not particularly big, as Roberto said before. It is anyway split into two main staircases. So inside the volume, so to say, of the building, we have chosen some apartments uh, that can really represent all the other, let's say, conditions uh, describing the average behavior of the building. So once again, uh, you know, intermediate uh, floors, top floors, ground floors, so you have different conditions, different orientations. This can be, I mean, compared uh, on a later stage. Um, now, this has required uh, availability from, you know, the owners or the, uh, let's say, uh, tenants. You know, it was difficult, I mean, to access the apartments to install sensors, plus uh, to do maintenance. You know, the battery of the sensor uh, that runs off, or maybe the uh, communication hub uh, with no internet connection sometimes. So, of course... Uh, Periodically, I mean, regularly, uh, uh, you know, uh, our earlier colleagues uh, have uh, immediately solved any single issue going on. This is an example of what we have inside the apartments. I mean, we have multi sensors to monitor temperature, relative humidity, and then occupancy, and then uh, lighting, the content of CO2 and the presence of people so that we can report, I mean, draft a report and make a comparison with energy use measured with an electricity measure or meter. There's a hub connected to the internet. So thanks to the API that we talk with the BIM management system. So the BIMs that of course will make all of these data points available to other tools or other applications that we will see in the rest of the morning. We have thermal uh, energy sensors. They are not connected to the system. In this case, we have to uh, do the uh, manual input of uh, data. This is what we decided to do. Most sensors uh, have been installed inside apartments. Uh, I will tell you where and how. The uh, electricity meters have been so-called parallel installed, connected to transmission hubs in the technical rooms. So in the caves and in the meter uh, room, you know, they are sort of invasive. They may have created a visual inconvenience to um, um, inhabitants. Don't forget, we are stepping into the home of people who, of course, want to have an elegant apartment. So we need to comply with the needs of the tenants. We don't want to be invasive. In terms of installation, yes, we had some issues uh, versus our ideas for an optimal uh, installation. So. We consider the needs of uh, tenants. At the same time, we may have had positioning difficulties. We had to fight against, let's say, the presence of fixed furniture um, or many other systems, for example, heating systems, thermal systems, or even cooling systems. In other cases, we have to pay attention to our false readings because of a strong light. We found the right position, considering the size of every room, so positioned in the middle or at two-thirds of the room, considering that this really represents the average, uh, the average quantities, uh, considering I mean, the environment we wanted to monitor. So we have to have enough visibility to monitor the presence of tenants. We measure the temperature of the air. 
We don't want to have interferences in terms of other systems already installed, the lighting level in the room uh, had to be uh, correctly assessed. Now, we wanted to really represent, you know, the average or the so-called repeatability of the positioning of sensors in the apartments. So inside, I mean, this building, uh, apartments uh, um, look very much the same. Okay, so we looked for positions that can be used in every single apartment so as to make comparisons um, um, considering, I mean, minor differences. This means we could have the best possible description of the building. You can see an example of sensor positioning. They have been uh, usually positioned in the living room with, uh, you know, temperature and humidity and then uh, the uh, CO2 level sound pressure together with the bedroom. Here we only measure the temperature and the relevant humidity. In this case, uh, uh, well, you see another type of apartment, so either two bedrooms or three bedrooms. This is the picture top right. It was impossible to comply with our positioning rule because on both walls uh, there was furniture, so it was not possible, of course, uh, to interfere with the, uh, let's say, decisions, I mean, of the tenants. Again, we don't want to, uh, you know, to be a hassle for our tenants. Wall-mounted sensors have been uh, positioned on the wall with a battery to reduce the number of cables and to reduce the uh, use of uh, plugs and sockets even if, you know, some multi, uh, you know, sockets have been installed, plus the battery, so as to reduce consumption due to the type of system, you know, the, to uh, improve in general the system. Of course, uh, uh, well, every two or three months, uh, we have to go back to the apartments uh, to replace the batteries. <laughs> Now, um, you don't necessarily have to read this table. Uh, this is to tell you that we're now monitoring uh, nine apartments. Now, we had 11 at the very beginning, then two tenants uh, changed their minds. But uh, thanks to all of these activities uh, carried out in the last months, uh, well, we got a very good result. I mean, we have added five tenants they have asked to have the sensors installed in their apartment. There are some you know, difficulties in terms of integration of the sensors, but we are solving these issues. Um, don't forget that we work in a building where tenants may have uh, uh, maybe 70 years old. In some cases, uh, uh, they are more than 80 years old. So they have some issues to manage the IT systems. So we've uh, put together meetings with the tenants to introduce the tools and their functioning, to clarify fears and doubts, or to answer, you know, questions. Now, it is a digital project, but anyway, we handed out manuals, I mean, booklets, so that they can really understand what we're doing, what the potential of the tool is, and uh, I mean, how to operate the systems. We also put together workshops or hands-on workshops with uh, many participants, uh, plus uh, the new extra tenants. So we have thanked, you know, the uh, participants. This is fundamental for the development of the project. I mean, um, the impact is positive if we are able to offer benefits to tenants. It's important then to work with them directly 
uh, repairing, uh, you know, software programs if not working. And also doing dissemination activities, uh, giving advice and recommendations to reduce energy consumption. It is possible to measure consumption and um, we know if uh, the intervention, uh, I mean, we have to measure the uh, impact of this intervention because we want it to be as meaningful as possible. We also offered uh, uh, questionnaires or surveys that have been filled out by participants and tenants. For the time being, results are positive, so we are happy of this. So tenants like our activities. Um, we also share the surveys with you. Um, you have a QR code, there's a link, so that you can fill out the questionnaire on the uh, potential of the uh, toolkit. If you are now in, uh, I mean, um, if you are following us from home, please uh, participate. It's important for us to collect this information so please give us your honest, you know, uh, frank uh, feedback because this is what we need to develop the project. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really would like to thank ALER, so ALER and the regional authorities. I'd like to thank my colleagues from the Polytechnical here in Milan, Professor Dagnotti, the coordinator of the project, together with Alberto Pavanci and Cinzia Bolognesi, Mr. Signorini and Mrs. Peroni, with whom we have uh, daily exchanges. So we've been doing this for months. But uh, once again, we are working very fruitfully. Thank you so much. As Roberto said before, I can see here Claudia and Vincenzo, two fundamental pillars, if you will, for all the activities we carry out with uh, tenants, so they are a great team we interface with. Thank you, Andrea. Just uh, an immediate feedback. Um, I attended one of these tenants' meetings, and uh, it was great to see fear first, but then curiosity, and then uh, an open-minded approach. I mean, towards the future. So understanding that this can improve their quality of life. So, uh, you know, once again, I really would like to thank uh, all of my colleagues for what they have done. Because, you know, um, if you uh, support people, well, they go through difficulties. You have to explain, you have to do dissemination, So we are not, I mean, an inconvenience, but we are there because we want to improve their quality of life. So once again, thank you so much, Mr. Mainini. The floor goes now to Bruno to continue with the presentations of the partners. Okay, before starting with the uh, collection of tools, so the uh, BIMS or B-I-M-M-S, so the management system, let me tell you that I have introduced the uh, BIM-based uh, toolkit. I have also mentioned an activity developed by the Polytechnical so we have defined, I mean, the IT needs and the specs having to do with the regulatory framework. You know, at the very beginning, Professor Bavan was the pioneer. Professor Bavan is sitting here close to me, and he is the coordinator of the UNI team. You have developed... Uh, many different standards, for example, 11337. You participate also in the CEN, and you've been the coordinator of DigiPlace that we mentioned before. Okay, so just a couple of minutes to you, just to tell us about the regulatory framework aspects. 
that played a vital role in this project. We are still working on them. You know, Italy is putting forward specific activities on the semantic web and uh, data. We need to say that during the development of the BIM for EEB, there was another European project on the digital European platform. On the other side, there was a regulatory semantics project. So BIM for EEB fits right into, let's say, the sharing data environment of one single job, which is what we usually use in this new BIM world. On the other side, we have another option something a little better than managing the digital system for designers or developers. The BIMS or BIM management system, um, while developing a European platform, I mean, a, a sort of a disclosure of data. Well, on the other side, we use open languages, for example, XML, but also semantics. Now, semantics is being regulated right now. So, BIM for EEB, um, it was, you know, in the making, but um, it started, I mean, receiving the results of the other projects just to have one extra asset to, uh, you know, uh, invest on, projecting into the future of the digital sector. So, we have uh, wide platforms to share data understanding tenants data you know because of course we are very much interested in tenants behavior and the use of languages for example semantics which is what we use every day with google or big data so that you know the construction industry can move from a zero digital level all the way up to a highly developed a highly evolved digital approach this is what the standards wanted to do so helping them for eeb Within this project, we are also developing specific guidelines on the implementation of BIM, making a comparison with the uh, regulatory framework. Can you tell us what we are doing? Uh, I know that there are difficulties, right? Because, uh, I mean, guidelines cover many different aspects in terms of managing information, in terms of organizing processes. You are right. I mean, uh, our industry focused on managing projects. Now, as Mr. De Alberti has said before, we need to move to construction and management. So, guidelines are based on ISO standards, but now in Italy, but also in Europe, I have to say the guidelines basically lead, let's say, to the manager of the asset. The manager is at the center. You know, what is important is not the project. The project is created because, for example, ALER have some needs for tenants. So they are, let's say, the triggers. They generate requests. Then we have requests for designers and for the developer. So uh, guidelines on an international level uh, takes, uh, let's say, construction upstream, right? So the project is not important. I mean, the project is meaningful because it is able to meet the needs of tenants. Only in that case, we can say that that was a useful project. So only in that case, uh, you know, we have useful buildings. We need to create guidelines so that we can teach users and managers to generate requests. You know, our problem is that, um, you know, managers uh, can't ask questions, you know, and tenants are not able to ask the right questions, okay? So we need to tell them or teach them how to ask so that designers can answer. Uh, thank you for this, Roberto. Um, we know that our country is a leading country in Europe. I mean, uh, Ditch Place, the BIM4, EEB, and many other tools. So we have different uh, coordination functions. We also have CER442. We also have other European projects. So, well, once again, this is the leading country in Europe. 
Okay, we'd like to thank the speakers. Let's now describe the uh, BIM-based toolkit. I'd like to thank Davide for being so uh, patient with us. Floor goes now to Davide from one team to introduce the BIMS or BIM management system. Thank you, Davide. Good morning, everyone. I hope you can hear me. Good morning, everyone. I'm representing one team. This is one of the partners of the project. We have developed the BIMS or BIM management system included into the toolkit of the project. Um, let me tell you that in terms of buildings, uh, the quantity of data and information available generated by the building, but also by all the building assets that we have uh, in our territory, of course, this is a huge quantity of data points. We need to manage all of this stream of data so as to make the right strategic decisions. This means we can also collaborate in a much better way. So we created a common data environment, a CDE. This is an environment where we share data and uh, basically all the information is collected Information is shared between all the players participating in a renovation project in a controlled way. CDE is included in many of the regulations created in the past years on the document management. Uh, one team has created a CDE, which is a platform uh, it is based on a common data environment. Once again, CDE, you can see here the first access page. This is the landing page to the platform. And uh, you can see links to other tools. And the main aim is to help stakeholders inside the entire project management process. I should say building management. So we have the project. We also have the building, I mean, construction, and then the management of the building. Okay, so at the end of the uh, works, uh, the building, you know, becomes alive. We have many users coming from many different, uh, you know, professions, engineers, uh, designers, uh, technicians, uh, tenants, and owners. The main aim is to... Uh, store models and documents. Let's say the uh, administrative, but also non-administrative documents. We also want to take care of data coming from census. You know, Mr. Maimini has been very clear on this topic. We also want to collect and make available the feedback. So the needs of tenants. The system is available on the internet. You can see here the address. So it is now stored into a server. All participants can take advantage. Um, the main interface of the system. We have basically a file management system or document management system. Uh, you can see the content and uh, we have the possibility to uh, make changes to the files. Um, you know, this is what happens between designers. For example, you have a document which is, you know, edited, revised by the same author, but also by other persons, maybe adding comments. So the system manages the so-called revisions of the documents. Of course, we have to manage the 3D models of the building. So you, the entire platform is based on the BIM concept. This means we can, you know, uh, upload, uh, you know, 3D systems, see the uh, hierarchy of the objects. 
Another important aspect is the GIS, so the geolocalization tool. So we can just, so to say, the building, but also the documents. Um, this is an important functionality because we add the, a further dimension, the geographical dimension to the system. So geographically speaking, we can retrieve important information on all what is around the building. Um, you have uh, data on the apartments, so we can manage, you know, the uh, metering of every single meter. Uh, this is a screenshot of some real-time metering data. Uh, this comes from the Italian demo site. You can see temperature, but it, it's impossible to understand uh, which is which, so uh, which apartment uh, is involved. So sensor positioning is absolutely a fundamental topic, obviously to manage confidential data. The system ensures uh, privacy and also permissions. Only some users can see their own relevant data with specific permissions. For example, a user may just see some information or some measurements, but of course we don't know where this comes from, I mean which apartment this comes from. In other situations we can have details on every single apartment. This may happen to a tenant or to the building manager. So this is what we saw before in the table. We can explore, so to say, an area of the building, um, you know, investigating on the census, retrieving information from the census installed inside. So um, we're talking about BIM, so building modeling. We have a visualization tool. We now manage the interoperative format this is a university recognized as standard in the industry to manage 3D models. So I can, uh, you know, navigate into the model to just think of a designer, but also, I mean, those persons managing the building, they have the possibility to uh, see possible problems, issues, the positioning of the apartments and all the features. Uh, we may control equipment. So once again, the sensors or other equipments we installed to see where these devices are, if they have problems. So there's a sort of a visual navigation, but also a hierarchical navigation. So BIMS is, if you will, an advanced file management tool. There are interfaces that give you the opportunity to attach or to give a specific structure to the file that you are either uploading or editing, plus adding extra info. This is one of the key elements of the project, ontologies. Uh, this is the right name, as we said before. We also have other data, so we have elements and properties of the file. This means we can really add or enrich information. If you consider the most tangible features of the system, you can uh, upload and download files. For example, this is an inspection report. This can be done by the owner of the building, for example, the um, association. Aler, A-L-E-E-R, they may want to go see the building and upload an Excel file on the system to make it available. Now, in this case, a collaboration or partnership also means uh, approving or rejecting um, editing. So what we do every day is, you know, editing the files. So asking people to, let's say, approve or reject a specific process. So you, you now see a, a video and you can see here a collaboration phase and exchange between two users. 
we are uploading the documents. Of course, uh, I have speeded up the video. I mean, to comply with the time given to me. Once again, to save time, I have speeded up. So you have file upload, file classification. You view the file in the interface. The file can be shared. It can be a report, if you will, or a document uh, uh, submitted by a designer, or maybe uh, also a document coming from a tenant. So if I want to share the document, which is what I'm doing right now, you know, I'm now sharing the doc with another user taking part in BIMS. So I want to have an approval. So is the content of the document to be approved? So the user will receive a notification via email. So maybe the tenant can access the system, uh, you know, view the document. You can also see the history of what happened before in terms of editing. Once again, you can view the shared documents and again, you may want to approve it or to reject it. This is one of the basic functionalities that you can find, uh, you know, in our industry. You know, this operation is done so many times. So we need to uh, uh, track all of the changes in the Docker. Who did what, when, and uh, what to do in the future. Um, there is also another functionality, which is the logbook. Now, the logbook is a proper book, once again, a very important. Once again, the logbook, so containing all of the logs, I mean, the uh, historical information of the building. Um, what I have just shown you is now part of the historical info. Drawings, administrative deeds, restructuring renovation works, documents, some features may have changed, features have been slightly changed, maybe a pattern changed. So all of this will be included into the logbook. Um, well, the name is logbook just because it contains the history of the building. Uh, you access it and you see all the information. So BIMS allows you to collect all of this info. Now, another important function, a very innovative one, is the possibility to connect the so-called link data. It's a unique, one-of-a-kind uh, uh, interface collected, once again, the uh, link data. Let's say it's a brand new uh, cutting-edge technology, publishing structured data. So this facilitates uh, the collection and linking of uh, different pieces of information. So this helps you publish or well, collect first and publish information that you can see here. Uh, this is another demo site from Finland. The position of the building right here, this red dot. <coughs> so we can query the system. Do we have information on the building? And uh, once again, we can launch a query on Wikidata, which is the ontological part of Wikipedia. I'm sure you know Wikipedia, so this is a collector of the information. So with this system, we can collect info concerning our building and what is around the building. For example, we find out that all around the building we have uh, some historical protected areas. This info may be useful to the designer uh, because there may be some special you know, uh, regulations on the building and the context in which the building is located. Now, this is an Italian example uh, to make sure you understand what I'm saying. The example here concerns Milan. If we have, for example, a building close to the main cathedral square, Piazza Duomo, we can ask the Wikipedia which kind of historical buildings we have around our building. 
We can also retrieve the information concerning the building or if we need to renovate our building, we may want to uh, have information, for example, on construction companies, developers, or plenty of info concerning our own building. Now, all of this takes place in a special way. So uh, this data is not into the BIMMS, so this is external data we can query external sources and download the information into our system. Now, let me now wrap up by telling you what the results of the process were. Well, one of the most important results was to exchange info between different tools one of the most important cases where the average user you know takes a lot of time to do this for example upload an info you know it takes a long time so the upload but also the download actions are time consuming now the documentation we saw is edited quite often so the cycle is repeated over and over again and uh, this leads quite often to time consuming actions and this will turn into uh, you know, increasing costs. So with BIMS, we have reduced up to 70, 70 of the time required. Documentation is uploaded once only. Edits are done with a specific you know, uh, IT functions. So we only change and edit uh, some parts, I mean, not the entire document. So we can really work on single individual parts of the documentation. This can happen so many times, but of course, uh, we don't have to upload and download the file because once again, this is so much time consuming. Okay, running late, David, sorry, so need to wrap up. We do this with all the tools you will see in the next presentations. And uh, in this very case, this exchange of information allows to have a quicker access to information. Okay then, so to wrap up, the system is connected with the tools we will see later, but also to a so-called open architecture structure that connects every single tool you have on the market for which the API are available. This means that we can have a communication flow between the two systems. This is my last point. You can see here the use of BIMS with one of the most widely used software programs from engineers or architects. So you can see here that the file is shared, the changes down to the file, for example, we can define here a new area inside the building. So this info is shared very quickly inside BIMS, which is what you can see here in this uh, screenshot. You have uh, a view on overview of the uh, interface of the system. Thank you. Thank you so much, Davide. Thank you so much. Now, a BIMS or BIM management system is the beating heart, I mean, the hard core of the system with plenty of important functionalities to integrate and share information with and to many tools. Once again, this is really, really important because it is interoperable and it's an open system. This means that it can be further developed and it can be applied to many different levels. So the floor goes now to um, Eva. So CGI Sweden, they have developed a fast mapping tool. Okay, Eva Lotta, Kuokinen. Okay, Eva from uh, Rice, are you there? Please go to the presentation, fast mapping tool. May start seeing uh, the presentation. Yes, uh, I'm Hi, I'm hi, Eva. Hi, hi. Well, one hi. moment, because I see the it's loading, but uh, uh, maybe you can light on your camera and then uh, you may enter yes i have the camera on but i am not visible 
Uh, we, see? we see, see some. Yeah. We see. Uh, we see for the moment uh, a part of your presentation and uh, uh, chiedo alla regia appunto se è possibile inquadrare la camera di, uh, di Eva Lotta uh, del Rise. Di che... work, uh, mi sta dicendo che non funziona la, la camera. Comunque... Uh, no, magari andiamo alla presentazione. We can go to the presentation. Possiamo yeah. andare alla presentazione. Potete Would you like mostrare... me to share the presentation or eh... are you doing the... Possiamo condividere la presentazione di yeah. Valotta, di Rise? Per favore. Ecco qui vediamo... Uh, dunque Rise appunto intanto introduco intanto che arriva la presentazione eh. so waiting for the presentation to be uploading uh, Rise uh, focuses on the existing uh, property and uh, apply BIM in CIF and it's an interesting uh, system so as uh, to uh, understand what type of materials uh, are used uh, in uh, the uh, walls of the building, the piping of the building for uh, warm and uh, cold water, the uh, electrical system. We still can't uh, see the presentation of Eva. Oh yes, Eva, you are ready. You can start. We are ready. Uh I have to say that I can't see my presentation. Yes, we can see. You can see it, but I, I can't see it. It's the first slide. You, you cannot see, but please, uh, you may speak, introduce, it's just the yes. introduction. Yes, uh, please introduce. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Bruno. Uh, you can go to, to the next slide. Yes, now I see it. Sorry for the, the, not the one, oh, oh, you, you can keep, keep to that, that slide. Uh, I suppose that you would like to translate into Italian? Uh, it's automatic, the translation, so you can speak English. The uh, translation is ongoing, thank you. After each sentence, you could continue. Oh, sorry for, uh, uh, for this. Uh, I am going to talk about one part of the, um, uh, the tools that is developed in this project. Uh, it's called Fast Mapping Tool, uh, and it's one part of a bigger toolkit. Uh, me, myself, uh, work at uh, the Research Institute in, in Sweden. We have together with Another company, CKI, uh, worked with this tool, which I'm going to present today. And if you go to the next slide, uh, the object with this tool is to ease, easier obtain documentation of the construction of the existing building which is going to be renovated or restored or something like that. And another goal uh, is also to get more information, not only the ordinary information you get when you do a scanning of a building and so on. Um, and what's come out of this is that you have a better understanding of the building that you have to work with. Uh, I will also say that this toolkit. Uh, it contains of AR glasses, augmented reality glasses, and a sensor stick, and a software on a laptop or a computer. That's the different part of this tool. Uh, if you put your next slide, um, I will describe about how does this work, like a small and easy simulation about it. Uh, so, number one, how to start it. 
in the beginning, you need to have a laser scan of the room, of the department, and the area that you would like to have mapped with this tool. This could be done by someone else, uh, and it could be done before. Uh, what we need to have is to have a point cloud, and that is what is obtained from the laser scanning. Uh, when you do the laser scanning uh, and obtain a point cloud, the point cloud because they like dead information because the computer doesn't know when it see a point cloud if it's walls or windows or door or what what it is. It's just point, and that's where our tool come in. Uh, so if you go to the next slide. Um, once you have this scanned point cloud, you can take on your uh, AR glasses, which you can see on this picture. Uh, those glasses are transparent. So once you use them and have them on, you can see the reality. You see the room as it is and all the environment. Uh, <clears throat> but the good thing with this is that you can load into those glasses, you can load extra information. So you can add the point cloud into the, those glasses. And that is what is done in the picture uh, in the right, right corner. You can see uh, to the right of the picture, you can see it's the reality, it's the wall with a cable channel. Uh, to the left in the same picture, you can see it's that there is a point cloud added to the reality. So once you have the glass on, you can see both the reality and you can also see the point cloud. Then it's very easy to mark with the glasses in the reality, just with your finger, and said that this is a corner for the wall and this is the corner for a floor or a roof. And then you can define that this part is the wall and this part is the floor uh, and this part is the window. And then the computer knows what it is. Then it no longer that inf information that points. Um, and the good thing is I would say that this, you can say this is good enough, but to have more information, because that was also a purpose with this toolkit. Um, you can add by the sensor stick. You can also add and scan, scan like temperature, uh, different densities in the wall and so on. So you can add, you can go to the next slide. Yes, there you see, uh, it's my colleague Jürgen who used the AR glasses together with the sensor stick. The sensor stick, it consi consists of different sensors that could in real time measure inductance. It's like uh, uh, it uh, uh, measure the, the con condensed of density in the wall. So it could uh, detect like a stud or if it's other materials behind the wall. Uh, it also measure capacitance. Uh, by measuring the capacitance in, in on the wall or on the floor, on the surface, then you can detect if there is moist uh, or if it's water pipes. Uh, behind. There is also an uh, electric, electric detector, um, which means that you got signal if you have an electrical cable behind the wall. Uh, and it's also a temperature sensor on the stick. So you also can measure the temperature on the surface of the wall. When you know those four uh, properties, uh, capacitance, inductance, electricity, and temperature. Then you can figure it out if what you have behind the wall. 
if it's uh, duct cables, uh, uh, moist, if it's uh, air gaps, uh, or if it's studs or other beams behind the wall. Uh, you can go for next slide. So when you have the glasses on, uh, you see the real room, and you can also see in the glasses the uh, the box with the measurement result when you use the sensor stick. And you can also choose to have a color uh, detection of where you have been using the sensor stick and which um, property has been detected at that point. So that's what you see to the right with the different colors. That's where we have used the sensor stick. And you can see we have red, green, blue dots. And that means that it's different properties uh, uh, that is uh, measured. Like we have electricity and we have different temperatures. In this case, it's mainly electricity and inductance and conductance who is hewn in, in, uh, in this picture. When you see those colors and the result from the sensor stick, uh, it's possible to define what it is. And you can see it on the next picture. So then, all again, you can, you can change to next. Um, so when you have the glasses on, you can, by your finger, you can say when you see uh, the colors and the result from the sensor stick, you can say that this is probably studs. My example on this picture is uh, studs. Uh, and then you can draw them. You say this is a stud, and then you draw them directly uh, at the point cloud. Uh, what you have to done, do, uh, this sounds very easy, uh, but it's I would say it's a little more tricky than it sounds to be. Uh, you have to be careful and you have to adjust what you draw so that it's in line with the reality uh, and other things. You can see in the uh, above picture that they are tilted a little, so they have to be adjusted. So it's, it's correct, so it's become correct. Uh, when you are satisfied, uh, then you choose to to create an IFC file of this. Uh, you can see it on the next slide. Uh, so when you are satisfied with uh, using the, the tensor stick, if this for this example we can say that we have we would like to know where the, the studs are in a wooden construction building, uh, and when we have detected them and uh, pointed them out, uh, then we can choose to create an IFC file that could be used to further uh, uh, further in the whole BIM, BIM system. Uh, so, um, next picture show a little what what is already existing and what's on the market already. And so if you go to next picture. Uh, yes, there you can see that the existing equipment that is uh, used today and that you can uh, buy is the laser scanning uh, and also the AR glasses. In this project, we have used the one called HoloLens 2, but there is others. Um, when what we have done in this project and what is new is uh, the sensor stick and the software who connects the whole lens with the laser scanning and the sensor stick. If you change the next picture when you see it. Uh, so this is what we have done in, in um, in this <coughs> project, as I said, it's a sensor stick to combine the different sensors 
to a stick and the software uh, to make it able to to uh, for the glasses to read the point cloud and the information from the sensor stick uh, to the picture uh, left picture then you can see how it looks like when you have the glasses on and when you would like to have the menu about what you select uh, so you see the reality the room and then you just hold up your your hands and then you get the menu uh, so there you can choose in this case uh, you can choose between different point clouds which is uh, uh, downloaded to the the um, uh, laptop before so you can choose the the uh, point cloud who is connected to the room that you are standing at the moment uh, we were in uh, november if you change to the next build uh, we tested uh, this equipment at your demo site in Italy, the 2nd and the 3rd of November. It was my colleague over there and he made a, a laser scanning and he also, yeah, that's resulted in the in, uh, different point clouds and uh, he also did uh, mapping of a ball to show how the sensor stick works. Uh, when we were in Italy, uh, the connection between the sensor stick and the HoloLens didn't work. So when we did the demonstration, we could only see the result from the sensor stick on the laptop, but that is it fixed now. Okay, that was what I would like to, to say. Uh, thank you, thank you, Eva. Uh, this is the first tool, and uh, uh, would I, I would ask uh, for everyone who is in uh, online to fill the questionnaire, the survey, because that's important to gather the feedback uh, about uh, the project. Uh, this is yes, thank you. This is the uh, the slide, please. Uh, Fill the survey because we need a uh, feedback, and that's important in order to understand if uh, what we are doing is well sufficient, or in any case, your opinion is very important because uh, uh, if there are some critical points, we would like to uh, improve. As you know, this project is going to develop uh, a TRL5, but we are going to the next. So this is the, the uh, slide with the QR code for the survey. Please do fill in this uh, survey. We uh, are, of course, already in the phase of uh, disseminating results, but uh, of course, uh, in case uh, of uh, critical elements, uh, problems, uh, or things that we can improve, uh, well, of course, uh, we will delve uh, on that, uh, and uh, uh, we will then uh, be able to uh, close uh, stage uh, uh, five and move on to stage seven. I think uh, we are going to introduce BIMISA, and uh, that's about uh, energy efficiency aspects. Eh, vedo Temu, eh, VDT e eh, passiamo ora all'efficienza energetica. Eh, grazie Temu. Eh, so Temu, you can start. We see your slides, you can start. Please go. Yes, good morning. So my name is Temu Vesanen. I'm from VTT, a technical research center in, in Finland. Uh, my colleague Jari Semekka is also mentioned here. So he was supposed to give this presentation, but, but unfortunately, he couldn't join today. So I'm, I'm having the presentation today about BIM ESER, which is a decision support tool for, for energy savings. And I'm planning to, to tell you to, first about the BIM ESER. 
in a nutshell. So quick overview and functionalities and, and so on. Then I'm showing some, some screenshots, how the tool actually looks like. And finally, some experiences about the Via Verona case study in, in Italy, which we have been talking today. So Vimeo is an early stage tool for, for supporting energy simulations. Uh, it utilizes a commercial energy simulation tool, IDA, Indoor Climate and Energy, which is made by a Swedish company, Equa, that is very popular in, in Nordic countries at least, and maybe in Germany, but I suppose not that much in, in Italy. So we have presented that also. Uh, then we have also developed a, a cost database that is national. Uh, so more about it, it later, but, but the actual cost of renovation is in that database. So tool is, is BIM assisted energy scenario tool for energy refurbishment scenarios in, in early design phases. Uh, the user of the tool is, is called energy expert. So that would typically be a role in, in the design team. Maybe it's a HVAC designer or, or maybe there is a separate energy expert in, in the team, but, but some member in, in the design team should focus on energy. And that is the role that, that we are expecting to, to use this tool. There are three main functionalities. The first one is to, to create so-called as-is model. So the base model, how the building looks like, what is the baseline energy consumption before the renovation. Then the second uh, functionality would be to model the renovation scenarios. What will be done in the building? And what are those measures? For example, wall insulation would be one of the measures or could be. And finally, uh, when those models have been created, then we are able to simulate and calculate what would be the impact of those, uh, those renovations, how they improve energy efficiency and how beneficial they are in, in terms of costs, for example. This picture is a, a renovation process. So in the yellow background, you can see different phases of the renovation project. And it is common in, in many projects to, to use sophisticated energy simulation tools like IDA ICE or, or Energy Plus or, or something else. But that requires quite a lot of input information about the building. So you need to know many things before you can simulate. And that information um, is slowly collected during the process. So the amount of design data and other information increases during the process. And typically there is a gap. There is no enough information in the early phases to, to do the simulation. And that is the scope of BIM is your tool to, to make that gap smaller and help in that part of the process. This one is the basic uh, workflow. So there is the main role, energy expert in the middle. He or she is part of the design team and, and using the, the tool, which is up in the middle. Um, the tool uses the building energy simulation data model, which receives information from the BIM management system that was, that was previously presented by David. Um, 
Then the uh, beam laser tool, uh, it has the renovation scenarios defined based on the, the simulation model and, and renovation measure database. Uh, scenarios are, are sent to energy simulator, which provides energy results back to, back to the tool. And then uh, so-called owner's project requirements or KPIs are defined from, from those results. And these then can be reviewed by the, by the design team together to see which, uh, which renovation measures provide the best impact for the, for the building. Uh, benefits of, of using BIM, BIM ESER, uh, it allows accurate buildup of high resolution baseline uh, using the BIM and, and so-called linked data, which has also been mentioned today. So it automatically collects the, the data from available sources, and that's how you can uh, get the best possible data into the simulation and, and create accurate models. It also allows easy application and testing of different renovation scenarios for the baseline building. So basically you can just drag and drop those into the model and, and see how they would work. And since all this can be done fast in the early design phases, uh, the simulations are still quite simple and don't require a lot of time. Then the design team can, can really discuss together and try different things. And that improves the collaborative work in, in the team meetings. Uh, currently, we calculate these OPRs, so owner's project requirements. Uh, there are energy savings, there are comfort indicators, and cost indicators. Uh, for energy, we are calculating both delivered energy, which is actually purchased, and then the primary energy, which is the common European indicator for making different sources of energy comparable with, with each other. Uh, there is also the share of renewable energy sources in, in the building. Uh, comfort, uh, it's, it's uh, maybe the, the simple option for calculating the comfort. So how many hours there are when, when the building is overheated and when the indoor temperature is, is too high for, for the building to be comfortable. And for cost, we have investment cost, operational energy cost, and, and payback time calculated. Uh, this is how the tool looks like. So it is used in the browser window. And there are all kinds of details. Uh, you need to define these, these corrections. And um, then you can see renovation measures in the, in the database view. And you can add them to, to scenarios which will be then simulated. And finally, there are results in, in the bottom. Uh, this one is the national database. So it also has an interface which works in the, in the common browser window. So the data is there in the, in the database and you can see it in this this user interface in the browser. About the case study in Italy, what, what we experienced there. So as you already know, the Italian case study was this Via Pirona in, in Monza. And there were three uh, saving measures that were modeled. So insulation of outside walls, replacing of, of roller shutters, and replacing the windows. And they are better explained here. I don't go to this, these details now, but, but there were a lot of details about those and also the price for, for installation was, was specified. 
this is how the final OPRs look like in in those simulations. So there is some some cost saving and some energy saving and and also the comfort indicators were were calculated. Um, from the project uh, perspective, the interesting result or finding was, was how much this actually saved time. And we got quite similar results in, in both pilots where, where this was tested. These numbers are from the Italian pilot side, but we also got very similar results from the Finnish pilot side. So especially in this, this use case one, when we are creating the so-called as-is model, so the baseline model, uh, it requires quite a lot of work to, to do that in, in manual way. So collecting inf information manually from different sources and, and then putting that into the simulation program. Um, it, it went much faster with, with BIM ESER. We had the data available in, in the databases. So it could be downloaded from there. And then BIM ESER uh, helped create the model. And, and this 80% of time saving was was received in, in this, this pilot case for, for this use case. Also for other use cases, there were some time saving, but, but the total time in, in these phases was not that much. So absolute time saving was, was of course not that much in, in those. As a summary, we felt that we may say tool worked very nicely in these demonstrations. Uh, energy modeling time reduction was approximately 75% compared to the manual modeling. And the beam assisted simulation model usage adds, adds clearly value to, to early design phases where, where most of those costly design decisions are made. That is the phase when it is most easy to, uh, to affect on, on decisions. The Abirona building was an excellent case study to test the suitability of, of BIM ESER. It was quite complex to, to model. And, and that's how it showed how, how much time this, this really takes. We also received some, some further development ideas that, that go beyond this for eeb project. But of course, the simulation could, could always be faster. So maybe if there was a multi-core cloud service for, for simulations, that would speed up the simulation of, of complex buildings. And then, help the collaboration in, in the design meetings. Also, we, we were thinking that uh, when the baseline is, is created and it needs to be adjusted, so that model and, and real life, so real life measurements match each other. So that is called adjusting. So this, this kind of adjusting could be made by, by some artificial intelligence system that would look at both, both the simulation results and, and measurements from the real building. And then uh, consider what is in the, in the building and, and where the difference, difference between those two maybe comes from. But that is something that we will be looking at the coming projects and, and not in this anymore. That's it about the BIM ESL. So thank you everyone for, for your interest to the tool. Okay, thank you, Temo. Uh, we may go to the next, uh, I think is Andri uh, from UCC about BIM CPD. Hi, Andri, uh, if you may connect. Uh,
Possiamo connettere Andri Rischenko. Uh, in, in the while, meanwhile, participate to the survey, partecipate al questionario. E adesso Andri, are you here? Andri, with us. Uh, Andri Rischenko, uh, UCC, dell'UCC di Cork. E, eh, la presentazione, well, well. Dunque, la presentazione, adesso passiamo a un altro tool che è BIM. Eh, so, as uh, I was saying, we are presenting another tool, BIM CPD, developed by the Cork University in Ireland for the management of um, system uh, interventions. Good morning. Uh, maybe we can... You can light on your, ca your yes, camera. Yes, that's what I do now. Okay. Oh, hi, hi, Andre. Yes. How Hello. are you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good morning. Uh, You're welcome. Uh, okay. And I was saying, I was introducing you and uh, uh, your big group because I know that is uh, uh, is Cork University of Cork, but also. I, E, R, C, and Tindal. May you introduce you and your group, uh, uh, Andre? Okay. So um, we are uh, here together with my colleagues from uh, Tindal, from the from my RC group, uh, which is led by my colleague Brian. But also um, um, uh, there are uh, other people uh, today who will talk to you through BMCPD in detail. This is Karen, Owen, Farah. And uh, I will just do my introduction. Uh, uh, yeah. slide. We can go to the slides. Uh, yes, uh, my slides, uh, the slides will be uh, shared by my colleagues. So I will just say a few words just to yeah, go please go. this session. Yeah, of course. And then we, we just will go forward. OK, so um, uh, just to repeat shortly, uh, the BMCPD toolset being developed uh, within the tasks uh, of the work package 6, uh, starting from the tasks 6.3, 4, and 5. Uh, the report for this toolset being developed as a joint deliverable uh, from those uh, tasks and uh, being comp compiled in the form of a report uh, D6345. Yeah all three together merged in one document. So all specific uh, uh, explanations of the functionality and how the tool performed is uh, described in detail uh, in that report. Uh, so just to say uh, shortly, we say in, uh, when we say in the BIM CPD, uh, is, it stands for constraints checking, performance evaluation, and data management. So all of those three components merged um, uh, into one tool set under one uh, single uh, graphical user interface in order to provide the most comfortable usability for uh, related stakeholders. And uh, uh, my colleagues will talk you through the latest and greatest updates being done to this tool set. And so I can pass the floor to um, uh, my colleague uh, to my colleague Karen, and he will start from the data management and then so on. We will talk through the performance evaluation and uh, the data management after that. So you can connect. Um, it's it's Owen, Owen sharing video, I believe. Yeah. Okay, so um, good morning, everybody. Um, as Andre just introduced us, we are from Tyndall, myself, Owen, and Farah, and we're going to talk through the video that we did showing the tool that we're actually developing. So um, this, this tool has various sections to it, so we have the data management, performance evaluation, and the constraint checker. So the idea is that um, here in the uh, data management that it connects to the API for the sparkle and it can bring in the information that was shown to us earlier for like the temperature and the power used inside an apartment or a, or a house or whatever the site may be um, and you can then filter and search through that information you can also then go on to um, pull down um, the ifc files that are also 
available through that um, API. So, um, so like here, it is showing you um, how to download files from from the API, and then they will be downloaded to to your machine or to your server, depending on obviously how your computer is set up. And um, and then you can use slice them or manipulate manipulate them on your hard drive as 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 you would require to. So the API is connected at the moment just to all the demo sites that we have already seen this morning. So the um, data management also can take in uh, an IFC file or it can import data from a JSON file or from an Excel file. And by importing the data, you then can match it to um, standard units. So like you can match it, um, something that takes watts, power into watts and, and be able to map, map data so like the idea is that obviously we're looking at buildings here, but you can actually map any kind of data that you that you might have inside a file. So from mapping those um, those units together, you could then create a, a, a comprehensive data set that will have metadata as well. And with that metadata, then obviously you can you can store where that data came from and and how you would like to use it. And then you can verify the data by go actually going through the data. Now, you might only have a small data set, so it might be viable to go through it. You might have a bigger data set that you can't. And then from that, you can go on to the performance evaluation. And using the data set that you've just uploaded, you can manipulate the data into whatever, however you want to display it, how you ever want to show it, or however you want to, to evaluate that data. So here, it is um, drawing a couple of graphs there now um from uh, uh motion i think it's a motion sensor so it will draw up a, a, a graph here using the date and it'll give you an idea of the motion in whatever uh, apartment this may be that it's using from and then it'll give you a, a, a radiograph or a spider graph for that same information but as i said you can choose whichever graphs you may use or like to use and then from that information, you could, if you upload an IFC file or if you've taken an IFC file from the API, you can actually go through it and you can look at the different entities inside that IFC file and be able to compare um, different different entities that might be there. You might need to know how many windows you might have in a building or how many doors or whatever you might want to use it for. So you can look on the left side, you can see the message data that came out of the IFC file. And on the right hand side, you can see the, the different entities. Um, so yes, you can filter through, and you can filter through them as well. Um, and from that, then um, I think it's it's gone over to you, Owen. Uh, yeah. So um, now we'll see some of the analyzing the data, the performance evaluation of the data. So. Um, we have imported the data similar to Carden went through with the sensor import. So um, this example is uh, mapping for the temperature of four apartments uh, against each other. Um, so you select the, uh, the data inputs, the sources, then what variable uh, you want specifically analyzed from that sensor because um, those sensors have, have, you can see they have humidity um, motion and um, other ones there. Then you select the the date range, um, and it, it, it tells you uh, what what dates there is data available for, uh, and then you uh, submit it, and it picks the the best type of graph to um, to use automatically. So uh, for this, you can see uh, it's it's mapped the the temperature of of these four across this day. Um, so you can see that one of the Apartments has a higher temperature, about two degrees higher than um, uh, lot the, the other three, um, more or less. Um, so then, similarly, we can map uh, if we map uh, a different type, uh, which would be um, uh, motion. Uh, is the next one. Uh, you can see that we we we. If we pull it in uh, apartment two, uh, so that, that there's two uh, sensors on apartment two, 
Uh, so there's one uh, living area and one for the uh, bedroom area. So if we want to um, analyze the, the motion across the whole apartment, uh, this can be done uh, too. Um, so we select the two da data sources for the, for the two sensors uh, involved. Then we select the um, motion variable for each of those um, sensors. And then we select the, the data range that we want to analyze. Um, and then this will show us, uh, as we've seen, uh, these are, are, are two different uh, motion variables, uh, two, two different data sets, and uh, we can uh, analyze them individually or in combination. Um, so it's a way of um, easily uh, visualizing and anal analyzing uh, the data that you import. Um, so, and we see that this uh, radial graph is an easy uh, way so we can see that there's uh, no motion between um, nine o'clock and six o'clock in the morning. Um, and similarly, if we want to analyze the, the, the motion in the bedroom for that day, um, you can see it's a lot less, there's a lot less motion detected. And um, again, um, there's nothing during the night, no, no motion uh, detective um, during uh, sleep time. Um, so another um, attribute in this uh, performance evaluation is uh, the terminal comfort uh, evaluation. Uh, so um, if we select, uh, here we're selecting apartment two and the uh, multi-sensor, which has uh, humidity, um, uh, humidity, temperature, and uh, a few other, it has illuminance. Uh, so uh, this, uh, we select the details again for this, uh, the date range we want, um, and this will um, map the temperature and humidity, and it will also then uh, uh, calculate the average temperature and the average humidity um, across that, uh, at that, that time frame and it uses it for thermal comfort ca calculations. So the average in the apartment for that day was 22.5 degrees Celsius. Um, and then it analyzes these thermal comfort uh, uh, values to see was it within um, uh, ASHRAE um, ranges for, for appropriate thermal comfort. So if we just compare it to an outdoor sensor that we have um, here, we'll see that uh, it obviously should be um, outside the thermal comfort range if you're using it, uh, an outside uh, an outside sensor, which is what, uh, uh, what this one is here. Uh, we can see that, the, that the, the, the temperature is very low um, for this. It is, um, the average temperature is seven degrees. So this will be obviously outside of the, um, the range for a proper temper, uh, thermal comfort value. So I think this is uh, Farron now. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, so this example shows the relationship between two variables from one data set. The user can select the data source followed by the chart type, which is relationship. And the user chooses two variables to show the relationship between the variables and selects the X axis to be one of those selected variables. Date range is set and once submitted, the data is displayed in a scatter plot. Um, a user can also save the query if they want to run the same query again at a later stage. To do this simply, um, they can add a name and um, a description and click the save button. Yeah, um, the data can also be viewed in a table format. Um, in this example, the user applies an outlier identification algorithm, which finds outliers in the data and highlights them. Then the user can choose to keep or remove them from the data. The user selects one of the uh, outliers to keep in the data here in this example. Um, you can see that the outlier is still included in the data, and now um, the user is removing all of the outliers, and the new chart is then um, redrawn 
without the outliers and this can be saved or exported. Moving on to the MNB part of the tool, users can create a new um, measurement and verification project or load an existing one that they had previously created. They must enter some project details. The project title should be a unique name and this is checked by creating the database to ensure that the title doesn't already exist. They optionally enter the scope, project details, project type and other um, details and finally create a new project successfully or load an existing one. Um, users can create baseline models. In this example, um, the, a multivariate regression is uh, used. So users enter, uh, users select the data source, the Italian demo site is being used, the date range. Um, and for a, a multivariate regression model, three variables are chosen, the independent and dependent variables, and a third variable. For the third variable, users can enter a from and to um, values and this uh, allows users to split the graph into three and filter them by the entered values for the third variable. When the query is submitted, three graphs are displayed. Um, the user can enter confidence interval and multivariate regression is applied when the calculate button is selected and the user can save these models. In the next example, um, simple linear regression is used using two variables from um, one data source. So similarly, the data source, the date range are chosen and the independent and dependent variables are chosen from the drop down lists. When the query is submitted, a scatter plot shows the relationship between the two variables. The user can create a linear regression model. Um, the user enters a confidence interval value and clicks the submit button and the linear regression model is displayed. Um, the data can be viewed in a scatter plot, time series, um, chart, or a, a data table format, each of which shows the predicted y variables, uh, y values, sorry, um, lower and upper confidence intervals, lower and upper prediction intervals. And the model, model details um, show the slope, intercept, um, R squared, and other um, uh, values as well. And the model can be saved. In the reporting period, um, a user can choose the baseline model that they want to compare. Um, this is one of the models they had previously saved from the baseline models part. Um, a user can select the date range and view the baseline model. This displays the model data in a scatter plot, time series, and data table format. Once the user accepts the baseline model, the reporting period um, model and savings are, dis, uh, are calculated and displayed, and this model can be saved. Um, the non -routine, routine adjustments uh, the user can choose a baseline model that they had previously saved. Um, the user selects the date range that needs to be updated. Uh, they can enter the percentage to update by and whether to increase or decrease the uh, by the entered percentage. And once the user clicks the save button, the graph is displayed um, and saved. And as you can see that the predicted Y and the adjusted Y are displayed. Okay, I'll hand back to Karen for the constraint checker part sorry i was on mute there um so yes this is this is the constraint checker um section of the of the tool where you can upload a upload a file so the um demo that is showing here has actually been pre-saved into the into the system and what you can see on the right hand side was a is a, a jpeg uh, floor plan that's been uploaded and from from that you can mark your zones and the different areas that relevant to, to the property that you're looking at and from that you then you can you can um, choose your different sensors your different lighting smoke detectors etc and, and uh, HVAC system and you can create your own libraries in a, in a way that you can just literally just be able to pick up what you need and put it into the system rather than having to search through each time but you may have a have an opportunity to, to search, search through and have a look for for something so here now it's building up a it's it's what it was to put into the system and it's going to start with a, the HVAC system and then it'll go through the sensors and the lighting 
So when it then goes on to look at the actual floor plan itself, it's going to map it all out of how things should fit together correctly and properly. Um, so the next section here, as you can see, the, the floor plan and it's going to show you where and how the HVAC system, according to the system, should be um, designed, and then the electrical wiring as well. It then will, if you've put in other options, it'll show you how where you should put lighting and where you should put it in your fire sensors or motion sensors, etc. And then, as I said, you can save this all to the um, system itself. So you can go back and you can go over even refined systems if it didn't suit suit your needs or you didn't think it looked. Um, to, to how you made, wanted it to, to look, to just be described. And then you can export all of this out as a report or out as a, a, a PDF file. You can then um, utilize um, from there. And the report will also contain all the uh, information of, of what your library is. Uh, well. may, uh, as we are very late and we have uh, two more presentation, may I ask just to go to the conclusion, please? Okay. Thank you. Owen, do you want to? Um, yeah, so that's an example of our um, the BIMCB system, and um, that uh, it makes it a lot, lot easier to uh, analyze data um, for, for and the, the performance of, of, the, of the buildings. So, um, unless Andre wanted to say anything. Uh, no, we don't. So, uh, in case if you have any other questions, I mean, we open for that from our partners and participants of this workshop. Otherwise, Bruno, floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. The big team from Ireland, you have seen a lot of people working on this and very important contribution to the management. And thank you, Andre. Thank you for your team. Again, the survey, we may go to the next one. Uh, VTT uh, is about being planner. And uh, uh, I don't know if it's Marco or yet Temo. Uh, adesso passiamo all'altro uh, tool che è BIM Planner per la programmazione operativa e anche per il tracking, cioè la gestione. We can now talk about another tool, including tracking, so the management of the site, which is based basically on the approach that has to do with space management. So not only do we have the so-called traditional planning, but we also have to consider BIM. Okay then, can we have the connection with uh, uh, BTT, BIM Planner? I think Marco. Okay, just some service info on the questionnaire. There's a mistake, click on the purple button and skip the commercial. Uh, VTT, are you there? Okay, VTT, are you there? Oh, good morning. Uh, may you light on the camera or just to start uh, to introduce BIM Planner? I will it's... start, but ah, I will hi. share my screen. Hi, Marco. Hi, hi. Good morning. Uh, I get a message host disabled participant screen sharing. Is it possible? Yeah, but it's go they are going to upload the presentation. If you want, to, in the meanwhile, just to introduce uh, uh, the activity about the plan, uh, just a few words. In the meanwhile, okay. they are okay. loading uh, the, your presentation. Se potete uh, mettere la presentazione di Bim Planner. Okay, here he is. Yes, and uh, is there a possibility that I can change the slide? Well, anyway, let's go go on. Uh, this presentation is dealing with this beam planner, which is a construction, let's say, site uh, management. Se si può ridurre, modificare la dimensione e mostrare le slide in questo momento. Please show the slide, se può, alla regia perché sono piccole in questo momento. Uh, ok, you can go, please go. Ok, thank you. And, uh, 
presentation is quite different than the previous one, ones even which deal with these uh, energy efficiency issues. We are now discussing about the operations at site, how, how to improve the efficiency for the site operations. And uh, uh, I can't find how I changed the slide. Could you change the next slide? And uh, in briefly, we are discussing about here about the cloud-based scheduling software that is intended for detailed planning and tracking of activities at site. We have selected one, one specific uh, construction management or planning method called location-based construction management method for uh, this BIM planner. And the reason is that uh, we expect it uh, suits well in renovation project because we want to emphasize that we are planning the activities according where they are implemented at site. But so far there is quite a, quite a lot of uh, uh, software existing on market that follow even both of these, or even this location-based management and of course some relation to BIM models. But our new point is this, that we are using this link data approach for storing the scheduling data, but also some part of the BIM, I mean IFC data in a server. This, our scheduling data is following the uh, DECON ontologies that are developed in these projects. And uh, we could uh, describe these ontologies as a, let's say language or data model, which is public and uh, it, it is intended to use, to share the data, make the interoperable and exchange the data more efficiently with other stakeholders in the process. And when I use the word linked data here, I do mean the specific technology, not a generic um, linking data in, in, uh, in general. So this, there is some background work that is not visible for the user interface, the users, but it do have some research targets and of course targets for improving the interoperability. And of course we are, I would say more than linked, we are partly integrated with the BIM management system that is the centric part to share the information. Next slide, please. I won't go through this, uh, let's say background for this management method. I inputted these slides here. If someone is interested later to study or, or get some more information. Next slide, please. I will not uh, go through even this slide. I just um, want to emphasize below is uh, this figure or picture. I will use this, um, facade renovation or facade uh, renovation activity as an example in following uh, slides. And as you can see that uh, in this uh, Italian demonstration project, the facade the renovation was, uh, in the facade renovation was used this ethics approach where is installed new insulation layer, but also several other layers for coating the new insulation. Next slide, please. And uh, first, uh, let's say, approach in, in this BIM planner is that uh, we, we expect that the project has a agreed master schedule. I mean, the client and the contractor have created some higher level schedule of the major activities for the site. But in this BIM planner approach, there is a possibility to add some sub activities. As you can see there in this red box, there are those uh, different uh, work phases to implement the ethics uh, um, renovation method. And uh, so this is the part of this detailed planning approach. We add some needed subtract, uh, sub activities to make a more, more practical or more uh, 
meaningful way to plan the activities. Next slide, please. Sorry, there is, I see some animation, but uh, I ex uh, explained this approach. Okay, thank you. And the second uh, major part of this uh, approach is this location-based planning method. There is an idea that the user defined the work locations where the work will be actually done. Here is an example that is used in, in this demonstration project. This west facade was divided in two major parts. Uh, I'm re remembering that, that that was due to, to the scaffolding installations. And uh, we do um, define, or user can define in this BIM planner work locations. And important part is this linking those work locations to actual BIM objects, as you can see here. This W2 work location is linked to the, those uh, wall objects visible in, in the middle. If we stay in this um, slide for a while, there was earlier discussion about uh, the costs of as an investment to create uh, BIM model in a renovation project. It is not typical, it is quite rare because there has not been seen the values of, of uh, BIM modeling in, in renovation projects. But I would say that um, in, in BIM planner and for example, in the Finnish pilot project, um, there was quite simple BIM model. It was not that detail that was used in, in this Italian demonstration. And if no, detailed, uh, detailed uh, information is needed, we can use this as for visualizing the 3D structure. And what is important is that we are communicating to BIM management system through those IFC objects. We do have a, they are common language to us. We, we attach here information, that means the activities, scheduling data, tracking data to those objects and BIM management system could share that to the other partners. In that sense, we do need this uh, modeling approach in, in this planning. Next slide, please. And here is a very typical Gantt chart user interface for, for planning. On, on the left, you can see this master activity, the described sub activities, those work phases for this ethics renovation. Then you can see the, those locations. There is this W2. The blue bars are representing the planet, start and end times. S means start, F means finish. There are actual real data from, from these demonstration projects. There can be seen some, some uh, delay on the lower right-hand side approach. Next slide, please. This is some data that we have retrieved from, from our database. The idea is that every version of this plan is stored and we do have this information in, in the database. Those different lines in this figure represent different dates when, when the plan has changed in, in the database. And we do see that, that in the future, we could use this kind of uh, data for evaluating, make, make some kind of, a, let's say machine learning to identify from the data, is the work going, uh, is there, can we predict from the data that there might be some problems in the future in this project? This is of course something that we have not done here. We have to have firstly the data. There is a quite a need for, for such a data to make some, some learning systems. This is a, something in the background also. Next slide, please. Quite the important part and target in our work has been that we could, uh, in, in the, um, let's say, uh, inform the occupants of 
where the work are going on, and especially the apartment related work. So we have a functionality that we provide the information to BIM management system, which uh, forward the data to BIM for occupant, which, well, which is a user interface for the occupants. And the occupants could have some uh, deny or propose some new timing, and we can return it to the BIM planner. Of course, this is still quite, um, let's say, future-oriented approach, as there was a discussion that uh, the occupants or, or tenants are partly older people or, or otherwise not uh, used, familiar with uh, ICT tools. But this might be one channel to, to reach in, in some type of our buildings, the occupants also. And uh, I suppose and expect that this is something that the world is going towards this kind of a communication. Next slide, please. We do have a user interface where those user responses are, are provided to the BIM planner user. And there is some uh, functionality to, to make the rescue deal scheduling and uh, provide new proposal to the occupant. Next slide, please. Uh, I won't go this slide either through, but uh, I, as I said in the early phase, we, we do have, have made a, quite a lot of work in, in the background, in the server side to make this linked data approach happen but still we do have a different approaches for um, beside this linked data, we also use some REST API methods to retrieve data. And there is a, I would say a, a intermedial uh, approach called GraphQL for in some places in, in our uh, system. Next slide, please. This is something generic, we, we are, looking for in, in a wider picture, some kind of a, in the middle of this figure, there is this shared situation picture. Is there a possibility in a construction project to retrieve data from different systems and create a better awareness where the project is really going on? And uh, we have seen in some cases, some kind of a, control rooms where, where the all information is provided in, in the screens to the construction management or, or the supportive office people uh, or contractor to follow up uh, nearly real time where the projects are really going on. And in this uh, wider view, uh, the, the BIM planner is, is contributing in, in some area, not all, but, but some area. We are, let's say, on the way to the, to the, this whole, whole targets. Next slide, please. And uh, some, some, I would say these are not conclusions yet. We had some, some problems in the project. COVID made a, uh, delays on, on the actual uh, this demonstration projects, it has a huge impact on, on the scheduling in the project and make some, some problems. And also we have to remember that we are targeting uh, software that is at the technology readiness level six. It is not a commercial product. It is more like a, uh, uh, testing the ideas in, with the real data and there is still way to go to the commercial products. What we tested in, in this demonstration project, we didn't reach the, uh, uh, the initial idea to make some weekly scheduling and tracking. I would say that uh, we tested uh, midterm scheduling and tracking, which is called in, in a, let's say, lean construction management literature as a look ahead planning, a plan for next six to eight weeks. We make tests with the communication with the occupants about those apartment specific activities. We recognize some, some uh, issues in, in this software and uh, we need to, to 
uh, in the rest of the project, make some valuation. Uh, what is the value of this kind of uh, digital uh, construction management data? And uh, also um, somehow conclude how this BIM planner could be developed to get uh, to make a commercial uh, product. Thank you. That was all of my side. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Marco. Then we can go to the last one. That's about uh, uh, BIM for occupants, uh, suite five, I don't know, Costas. Are you online? Hi, Costas. From suite five, is there someone? Should be Costas. Suite five. Hello, can you hear me? Hi, Costas. Good morning. Uh, you're welcome. Now, allora stiamo andando l'ultima presentazione. Okay, once again, very last presentation for us this uh, afternoon, quite quickly. So the point now is the involvement of end users. Because, of course, in the case of um, ALER, A-L-E-R, here in Milan, we're talking about the uh, occupants of uh, social housing projects in the suburbs of Monza. A very important software has been developed in Greece and Cyprus. Oh, sorry, sorry, Cyprus, not Greece. This is once again in Suite 5. So uh, this is uh, for the involvement and participation of uh, inhabitants. Quindi, Bean for Occupants è dedicato proprio a questo. Once again, this is what uh, the software program is for. Okay, can you switch on the camera? connection, I would... I mean, yes, Costas Tsatsakis from Suite 5 in uh, Cyprus. Uh, uh, molto interessante uh, being for occupants. Now, this is really very interesting. I mean, there are two aspects. Um, there is involvement of end users concerning the control and measurement of comfort conditions and energy conditions. On the other side, we also have the uh, interface with the BIM planner for the uh, agreements uh, concerning the operating procedures, I would like to say. So we need to use uh, data to download, of course, uh, data. So in real time, it is now possible with LA data to have uh, the uh, streaming flow of data from the sensors that we have talked about uh, before. So sensors in uh, apartments, uh, uh, together with the meters. So Costos has cooperated to do this, okay? You can start, I guess, your presentation. Okay. Are you going to share the presentation or I should share the, my screen? Uh, potete mandare la presentazione? You can share the presentation. Okay. Uh, okay. I would like to ask the moderator to give me the uh, one moment of sharing my screen. Okay, now we are. Okay, you you can go. So, Please okay. go. Uh, so let's go to the next slide. Yeah. First, I would like to introduce myself. I'm Costas Tex. I'm from Sheet 5 from a small company in Cyprus. I, I believe that the coordinator did the, the, the presentation with me. So I will start directly with the application. The application that we are delivering is the BIM for Equipants application. Uh, as a tool, as a means to engage building occupants, inhabitants and owners during the renovation management processes, but also post-renovation processes in the building environment. Uh, as I added also in previous presentation, it is important to incorporate the different stakeholders at the decision-making process at the building management. And one of the key stakeholders during this process is, of course, the, the building inhabitants. Saying that and taking into account the needs of this specific stakeholder, inhabitant, which is a non-expert in the domain, uh, we have designed a tool that uh, enables them to uh, actively get enrolled in the overall building management process during and after renovation activities. So uh, the overall idea is to provide a tool that would facilitate the end users to have a continuous monitoring of ambient and energy conditions. So taking into account data coming from sensors that are now installed at the building environment 
environmental uh, monitoring sensors, temperature, humidity, luminance, or other environmental conditions, plus information about energy consumption of the buildings, as this comes from the sensors, are made available to the building occupants. And behind this visualization, there is an engine, which is named profiling engine, that extracts useful insights. So it's a mixture of applying analytics techniques with an enriched visualization that facilitates end users, which are again non experts, to get insights about the conditions at the building environment. In addition to this view, the user should be able to interact with this system and provide feedback about their conditions in premises. So if they're happy or unhappy with environmental conditions, they can express this information through this user interface. And this input is very valuable to an ML-based technique, the machine learning-based technique that enables the extraction of a comfort profiles that may be further used either through an automation system, which is not part of the work that was performed in the project, or can be extracted as information or inside, as insights for the building inhabitants or other stakeholders. Moving beyond this uh, continuous monitoring of contextual conditions, we have to ensure that the inhabitants are active elements, are active stakeholders during the renovation processes. And that's where providing three different functionalities. The one functionality has to do with the negotiation process during the renovation planning. So the renovation scheduling is not performed unidirectionally from the stakeholder, from the contractor, but the constructor is taking into account the user feedback. The inhabitants can express limitations or renegotiate specific parameters of the renovation process, maybe the start time, the end time, the duration of the renovation process, uh, the start date and the end date, and thus uh, collaboratively contribute to the planning of the renovation activities expressing mainly limitations that, I mean, are related to the daily conditions of, of the building environment. Also, as you know, that uh, during the renovation process, there is, a, I mean, a critical situation of the building environment. There are safety and security conditions that have to apply. And thus, we provide a tool, a, a notification tool, an informative tool for, for the building occupants in order to get informed about specific conditions that are uh, in taking place in the building. So if there is a damage in the building or if there is a, an abnormal condition, and considering that we have a monitoring uh, tool, so a, a, an expert, I mean, a, a responsible entity is, is, is at the building, we can inform uh, the building documents about these conditions and therefore the end users are, not, are getting notified about the specific condition. Also on the other hand, on the other hand, the, the building inhabitants can report an abnormal conditions through this tool that we have delivered. And that's having the experts, the construction companies or facility managers to get informed about the uh, damages or safety conditions in the building environment. Uh, last but not least, and this is very important in the BIM era, the building information modeling era, there are, I mean, okay, we have the building information model, which is a static representation of the building. But as you know, uh, there are updates on these building conditions. So there are new installations taking place, new devices that are installed post renovation process. There are specific conditions that have to be considered. Of course, the contractors are contractors. Contractors are the ones that have to, to get uh, access to this information and get informed about these updates. But in most of the cases. Uh, building inhabitants are the ones that uh, can uh, provide this information to the system. So if we need to have the latest and very updated information of what's happening inside the building, we can have building inhabitants reporting these updates in the building environment, and thus having the, the most updated version of uh, the BIM model in real time. So if we go to the next slide, please, which contains more or less the list of six functionalities that have been delivered. And this was part of the work that has been performed. Uh, we have the six views of the application, enabling the users to have real-time access and information about the environmental conditions, informing the users about the comfort conditions, presenting information about energy consumption, and then the renovation process related functionalities, having the negotiation mechanisms for innovation management, having the view about safety and security alerts and notifications, and the last functionality, 
has to do with uh, giving the ability to the inhabitants and owners to provide information about specific uh, updates that are related to the to the building information model. So if we go to the next slide, for this uh, we have prepared a demo video in order to show the functionality. So if we can skip to the video. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Costas. Okay. We are perfect. Yes. Uh, ah, there is the video. So, so please go. Yes. yes. So the video contains typical login processes. So we have to ensure that the building occupies. And that was, a, I mean, a critical task because we have many users. Uh, so we have defined, defined, along with other parts, of the, the potential of having the users logged in to the system and getting access on the, on the useful insight. So here you can see the screen about access on real-time conditions where you can have the information about indoor and outdoor conditions, giving always the possibility for the user to express sending feedback, as presented before, about the environmental conditions. The second view of the system that you can see now is the access on historical data. So apart from real-time data, you have information about the extracted thermal and visual frequencies in the first two graphs. And then, as you can see here, you have access on the history of data about temperature, humidity, and luminance conditions, giving always the possibility to the users to log in, to, to, to drill in to the detailed functionalities about environmental conditions. The third view, it has to do with energy data. So similarly to environmental conditions, the users get insight about energy consumption data, as well as some insights about the energy profile. That is very useful for them. Drilling also into specific segments of over history, daily data, um, weekly data, monthly data. Going back to the history and selecting specific data that are of interest for them in order to get this and rich visualization, especially now that their prices are very high. This tool is very useful for the users in order to get insight about their typical consumption profiles. Uh, excuse me, Costa, may, may you yes? speak a little more slowly because the translation yeah, is different. The, I understand it's difficult. that it's the, the video that it's, it's very... Okay, ah, sorry, very sorry, fast. you're right, you're right. Please go, go, go. So for the renovation process, management here is you can a view about the planning activities that have been performed. We are offering also a calendar tool, tool plus an overview of the details about the renovation activities following the negotiation process. The big annotations is the enhancement of the beam with information about new elements, new devices, new systems, new information that has to be part of the building information model. So here you can see uh, how we can add information about a new equipment that is part of the model, a new installation of an air conditioning, information that should be taken into account from other simulation or a building management tools. So this is a process that can be performed by a non-expert. And the very uh, last functionality, so along with uh, adding editing functionality also, and the very last functionality is the view with the safety and security alerts, where we use a typical typology, standards-based typology in order to taxonomize the different types of safety and security alerts, providing some information about the importance as well as the status. It's an, a past event or ongoing event uh, that is to take place. Giving the possibility also to the building occupants to, as mentioned before, to report safety and security conditions by themselves. So if there's a damage in the building, the users can report this information to the platform and have building uh, stakeholders, building owners, and building managers getting informed about these conditions and thus take mitigate, mitigation actions. Uh, the users may provide a short description or upload an image about this condition. Uh, then, as along with the alerting system, we have a notification system that the users can directly go through it and get the information about 
the notifications. And then typical functionalities having to do with uh, user settings, information about uh, demographics in an, in an anonymized way, plus some, uh, I mean, alias, settings aliases. If you don't like the name in your application, you can change some labels and thus personalize the application the way that you want. So that was it for the video. I mean, I don't, I mean, that, that, these were the, the, the six functionalities. So we can stop now the video presentation because the rest of the functionality it's for the owner with similar functionality. As you can see, by logging in with the owner account, you get aggregate information. So you get, so you get information at the building level. And thus we distinguish the information access between inhabitants and uh, building managers, let's say. Building managers cannot access detailed information per apartment, and thus they have information only at building level. So the, as I mean, we are now at the end of the project. Uh, this, this system has been under stress testing for a long period, for more than eight months, at two, at two demo sites, the Polish and the Italian demo site. And now we are on the process of analyzing the results that we have uh, extracted from the analysis. The analysis is twofold. First, the analysis over the data from sensors, the environmental conditions and the energy related data. We focus on the extraction of occupancy and comfort profiles. And second is the analysis of the renovation process management activities. So if we go back to the presentation in order to go to the next slide and present some of the results. So here you can see how from temperature data, we go to the thermal core for the care as we name it. For this, we take into account the environmental conditions tracked by the sensor that are installed, plus the feedback from the users, analyzed by applying naive Bayesian techniques, regression techniques, machine learning based techniques, in order to extract a, a graph showing the preferences and the non-preferences of users under specific environmental conditions. If we go to the next uh, view, and this information as extracted for thermal and visual information is better available for building occupants. So the building occupants get some insight about uh, thermal and visual conditions and preferences inside the building, inside the building apartment. If we go to the next slide, very important information is uh, the extraction of accurate occupancy profiles, and this is very important in general at the bibliography because, I mean, the definition of static occupancy profile is creating problem when it comes to the actual comparing the simulated with the actual operation of the building. And thus, the extraction of accurate occupancy profiles is added value of the project and in general added value to be considered in the future. So for this, we take into account uh, occupancy events that are tracked at the building environment in, a, in an anonymized way. We further analyze the logs. So we split the data from of, of, of presence, indication of presence and indication of access. If we go to the next slide, what we, what we do actually is merging the data over the time because we have a, a huge volume of data about the present indication of presence or indication of absence. And from this, we further provide statistical analysis over the days of the of, 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 of the week by taking into account a long period of time in order to extract more accurate, let's say, occupancy presence and occupancy absence profiles. If we go to the next slide, we have an indication during a weekday. At the next slide, please. About presence and absence during the day. So we have a, a presence uh, at the uh, during, let's say, afternoon and night hours while absence during morning hours. So the, the hours of the day are not visible on this graph, but here is the analysis over a weekday. I think it's Monday, showing when there is a presence and when there is an absence at a residential building. If we go to the next slides, very, very fast, showing that, okay, a part of, of the evaluation is, of course, taking the functionality of scheduling and of alerting, renovation scheduling and alerting, 
So we have the different innovation schedules defined collaboratively, taking into account end user feedback. And then we move to the next view. We have a list of the notifications that have been triggered to the system, successfully notifying the end users, the building inhabitants, about safety and security conditions that are taking place during a renovation process. That was it for, I mean, I was fast, but as the time is limited, uh, I try to present the different functionalities of the new project match application. The, the feedback is now under, I mean, the overall, I mean, experience from the building occupant is under an evaluation now, and we are now finalizing the functionality, the feedback that we get from the users in order to extract some results to be presented as an outcome of the BIM4E for, for demonstration at the BIM4EB project uh, demo sites. Thank you, thank you, Costas. Uh, grazie. Uh... Okay, then. So we now have to draw conclusions of our uh, morning works. I'm inviting our technicians to show the QR code. The floor goes now to Andrea. Okay, Andrea, some final words. You have had a general overview of the tool kit, so your feedback is even more important. If you are following us from home, please uh, um, fill in this uh, uh, questionnaire, if you will, also in the next days or so, because this is really very important for us. All of this may turn into a useful you know, uh, application. I really would like to ask you for the last time today to scan the QR code or maybe go to the uh, well uh, link that you can see on the bottom of the slide so as to uh, be led to our questionnaire. Andrea, thank you so much. So I would like to thank the uh, persons who helped us put together this meeting. I'd like to thank the uh, regional uh, authorities here uh, Immacolata, thank you so much for being our host and for giving us the possibility to, your, to, to, to be your guests. I also would like to invite our colleague, thanks to whom it was possible to organize this meeting. This was uh, uh, well impossible without you, Professor Bolognesi. She has developed the site. I'd like to ask you to share just one quick word. I mean, we don't have time now for questions because we are running late, but uh, I mean, in the uh, website, um, you can find all the information uh, you want. So please log into the site and uh, you can also send questions. Once again, Cecilia, thank you so much. Maybe just a couple of words on the site. Pronto? Sì, sì funziona. Beh, hai detto tutto, quindi <laughs> ringrazio tutti, mm -hmm. i colleghi di regione, tutti. I would like to thank all of my colleagues here in the uh, regional authorities building and then in Macolata, thank you so much for all the uh, presentations. So, um, in the website, you have a newsletter, so you can become one of our followers. You can also send questions. Uh, well, the professor will respond uh, directly. Now, we have to, you know, uh, thank the European Union. This is uh, a sort of a golden nugget, okay? We have to take advantage of this because this is our future. Well, of course, we have the resiliency plan now, but the European Union gives us democratic, very important uh, help to create a strong network. Europe is our home. So um, all of us, I mean, institutions, polytechnical, but also the regional authorities, we can really take advantage of this. Now we have plenty of calls open. Polytechnical is always available for partnerships. So don't hesitate. So we have BIM4EEB. Hopefully we will open other projects. 
So once again, social networks or even our website and take advantage of them, okay? Thank you so much. So before giving the floor to Imma Kolata, just one second, I'd like to thank all the partners. Thank you so much for taking part in this European project. We met you, we met all of you today. So our Finnish partners, I'd like to thank all of the members. We also have RISE, we have UCC, there was a, a, a big team. Thank you, Andre. And then we have uh, Sweet Five, uh, Costas has just spoken. Once again, I'm going through the list and I would like once again to thank, I'm not going to you know, list all the names. We have uh, David Imadeto, Andrea Perigo, and all the other partners uh, who haven't been here with us today. But thank you anyway for your support and contribution for Dresden, Avelio, Visual Link, ACE, so the uh, ACE, the European Consortium of Architects, CGI in Sweden. Once again, uh, we need to thank uh, Aller and the Lombardy Regional Authorities. Okay, this is it. Let me now give the floor to uh, Imma Colata. Bruno, thank you so much. It was a pleasure for me hosting, you know, this workshop. Uh, I found it uh, strategic, interesting, and in-depth to better uh, talk about our policies. I really would like to thank and have here two of my partners, Mr. Barletta and Juicy Tola. Two colleagues and two friends. They are so precious for me because um, they are sort of spring boards. I mean, two pillars. Okay, don't be shy. Join us. Once again, I need to thank them because they've given us uh, a tangible support for putting together the project. Okay, sorry. We have one, okay, one chair only. Okay, be kind. Now, in general, there's been plenty of partnerships with the academic uh, world, but this is something we usually do here in our region, and uh, not only in terms of social housing policies, but of course, uh, this is one of the key habits that we have here. We would like to share as much as possible. So, I have to say that, of course, uh, I mean, we had to, uh, let's say, to take your call and uh, we need to invite, uh, I mean, the entire system to keep working together. Uh, once again, this was a fruitful uh, cooperation. I forgot a very important partner, you're right, Aler, A-L-E-R. Uh, we also need to thank uh, the city of Monza. I also would like to thank uh, Mr. Venzo, representing the city of Busto Arsizio in the north of Milan. Okay, it's great to be here. I mean, in Tesla, we also have Claudio Monti Vincenzo Politi, because once again, we couldn't do without your help. It would have been impossible to show you all these projects and all what follows, because we will also have a video with some beautiful pictures just to uh, wrap up our uh, meeting. We also have Martina. Yes, Martina Signorini, thank you so much. Martina represents again the uh, Polytechnico. Okay, once again, don't forget social distancing also on stage. So, once again, grazie. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. I uh, also would like to thank all of those who took advantage of our streaming uh, service. Uh, well, there will be other meetings in the near future. So uh, Madrid, Brussels, and probably here in Milan, once again, uh, at the Polytechnical or here at the Regional Authorities Building. Okay, thank you so much once again. Thank you for participating. Arrivederci, bye-bye.